find it on www.rctv.org. Um, so uh, we have a lot on our agenda, and I'm, I, I know you're not all here for the same thing. So um, we're going to be try to move each item agenda fairly quickly through the program tonight. So um, I want to keep our comments pretty brief and succinct. And we will try to do the same, too. All right. Um, first item on the agenda is at 7, a notice of intent 270-0714, 135, 139, 143 Howard Street, map 10, lot 7576, 77, infrastructure holdings, LLC, and update. Uh, Chuck, what do we have? Uh, it's an update for uh, Howard Street. And we have some folks in. in. Yeah. Uh, and I did, uh, I believe I left you a message. Okay. So okay. when I saw you, I was like, oh no, did I call the wrong number? No, but uh, yeah, the, the update is there's there's no update at this point. Uh, I kind of go over what we said at the last meeting, which is uh, when we hear from Horsley and Witten, we first need to go back out and check out a vernal pool that was flat, pool, a wetland area that was flagged. So this would be an isolated wetland, and we need to have a review with um, the town engineering department. And after those two steps happen, they'll come back to the meeting. Uh, I don't know when we're going to get uh, some sort of printout of any kind of decision or any kind of help they're going to give us, but that would be available when we receive something. Chuck, did you contact Horsley and Witten? I'll write it on the list. Okay. Did I? Or yeah, had you? I? Did, did you? I didn't. No. Okay. All right. It might be a fairly good idea to do that. Just kind of put a... See what's going on. Yeah. So you get a timeline. What? I, I agree. Just understand, you know, what the timeline is and then we'll... Yeah. If we can expect them at the next meeting or if, if there's a reason that it would take longer. Not to be... Too disruptive. I was wondering if anybody who's going to speak tonight, uh, please sign in the sign-in sheet um, at the uh, that in the back, right there next to the door, the opening. Um, so, okay. The next item um, on the agenda at 7:05 is a request for determination of applicability 2019-6. 16 Plymouth Road, map 26, lots 101, Gravit. Gravit. Did I get that right? Gravit. Gravit. Okay, Mr. Gravit. Would you like to uh, explain your project, please? Yeah, so um, the current deck um, we're looking to replace with composite decking um, using four sonic tubes. Um, so, I'm sorry. We're I'm not sure if it was already been out to the site to see it, but come on, come up. I'm not sure if it was already been out to the site to see it, but um, we're going to be extending it two feet out, and there's an angle on the right side of the deck that we're just going to be making straight um, to give us a little bit more space for the deck. Um, Anika, you and Chuck. Um, we did. Uh, Chuck and I went out to um, this property on Monday. Uh, we knocked on the door. I think, was there a car in the driveway? There may have been, but we knocked on the door a lot and didn't get any answers, so we went around back. Um, it's pretty much, um, there's an existing deck back there. It's all lawn um, surrounded by um, chain link fencing, as far as I remember. Um, and at the down slope end of the fencing, is the, are the cattails, as you all know, along the left side of Plymouth Road as you drive down it. So, um, you know, it's it's basically a fully grassed backyard, and um, he's expanding the deck two feet. So it's so it's going from what maybe a six foot deck to an eight foot deck. It's going from an eight foot to a ten foot deck. Okay, but it's basically staying the same. Width yeah, except for, except for that cutout. So this, the, so it's eight foot by mm -hmm. twenty one and a half feet to that that little piece that's cut away, and that's going to get extended out to the line up with the side of the house. 
so at the end of the day it'll be 25 feet uh, across the back of the house 10 feet deep so adding two feet to the existing deck but not so much as as far as length and you're going to use the reuse the existing stairs uh, the stairs are going to be replaced um, it's going to be one level so right now it's two levels it's two separate foundations so it's going to be all one level um, so the stair rake is going to change same location though, right? same location yep location. with the platform yep okay okay um, but that was about it any questions so I went out and looked at it seem, today yeah. seems so it's pretty straightforward yeah. Yeah. very straightforward project it didn't look like a complicated situation which is good yeah do I hear yeah. a motion uh, I move we issue a negative determination yeah. second all those in favor okay. I prepared the uh, application. You would like to sign it tonight? Okay. Yes, please. Um, the next item on the agenda at 710 is a request for determination of applicability to 2019-785 Eaton Street, map 17 lots 268 Donahue. Um, are you Mr. Donahue? I am. Um, do you have your green cards, the return receipt requested? In For the mailers? Yes. Oh, sorry. And um, Chuck, um, do you know who didn't receive? Uh, yeah, your neighbor. <laughs> One of your neighbors called, one of the abutters called, and said that they just, they have an envelope, which I don't have with me. It, it was sent out from Rockton on uh, the 20th, which would be Monday, I believe. So if today's the 22nd, no, it would be Tuesday. So do you have, uh, what are the dates on those? 20th out of uh, ACTO. Out of ACTO? Yeah. So oh, we yeah, May, tw May 20th. Yeah, they're from Act. Yeah, it was Acton, May twenty. So, um, so that's a, that's a setback to uh, what needs to happen. So we need to. Uh, so there's a sort of regulatory time frame that needs to happen, and all the abutters need to have their um, enough time to digest the information and come down and look at the plans. And the state has decided that that's five days, and you didn't. You didn't meet that by, and it goes by this post postmark date, which is the 20th. So the only thing we can do at this point is not talk about this hearing tonight and continue it to our next hearing. Okay. And uh, and uh, you know, I believe that instructions are right on the instruction page of the RDA. So I apologize if that was some miscommunication between us, but we can't really move forward tonight with okay. this project. Okay. All right. So just resend them out. Nope. Uh, we'll just repost it, and uh, for the next meeting, we're going to continue this meeting okay. to the 12th of uh, June. June. So the 12th is obviously well beyond the five days. Yeah. Okay. Anything else I need to do in the meantime, or uh, if if I got any of that wrong, I'll be contacting you tomorrow and uh, and letting you know that we may need to you know, send out. How many people? Uh, How many people? Like 20, 29, give or take. Yeah. The worst thing that could happen is you have to uh, re, re uh, notify everyone. Okay. And you guys will let me know if I have to re I'll give you a call tomorrow. I'll just look okay. at it a little bit. All right. If this suffices, then, then continue would be fine. Okay? Appreciate it. All right. Sorry Thanks. about that. No worries. Thank you. I mean, we make a motion to. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I would we continue um, 85 Eaton Street, RDA 2019 7. Second. All those in favor? We have a few more minutes before 720. Um, do we have an order of conditions for two? Yeah. Colburn? Do, yeah, Colburn Road. We do. Would you like to sign that? Yeah, do we need to, to do anything? Okay. I already talked to the, um, I guess it's the owner's lab contractor. And he's satisfied with this. Uh, So 
we usually ask for granite bounds on the uh, 25 foot line and this particular property doesn't have a 25 foot line that's on the property and I changed that but I'm you know bringing it up for you to decide if this is what you want to go go with is um, I asked for a granite bound on the property line which would be about 40 feet away and I can pull this up if you want to familiarize yourself with this uh. <laughs> I don't have it in here. Which one is this? Colburn Road? Yeah, Colburn. What number? Uh, it's, it's, it's under old new business. First one. Nora conditions. They were here last I week. Yeah. I, I personally don't have a problem with it at <coughs> the property line. Mm -hmm. Does anyone, do you, so here's, I'll just so frame it a little bit better. So he's 40 feet away from the wetlands, which were not on the property. We usually ask for the granite bounds to be on the 25 foot line. <laughs> right. It's a steep drop at the end of the property so it's pretty noticeable that nothing can go down there the only thing I was thinking was yard waste could go down there so to mark this area as protected somehow might make sense and putting these granite or concrete bounds at the edge of the property line uh, like we do usually to mark the 25 foot area would protect that slope and in turn protect the wetland Usually put a placard on the granite bound as well, right? And, was and it? Yeah. Conservation Commission supplies a, a plaque for the top of that. What's it say? It says, it says Reading Wetland. It doesn't say, it doesn't say like 25 three. feet, right? <laughs> one says leaving. Trails Committee here? Uh, leaving uh, protected area. Yeah. It says Reading Wetland. And I don't know what the other one says. Okay. So would we ordinarily put them on the 25 foot? line as it is behind yeah. his house yeah so it doesn't say 25 foot line the, the only it just says protected area yeah right. so would you're up you just think we're just going to move that x number of feet to the top of the ridge right and the edge of the property line on the property line yeah yeah i'm fine with it at the property I'm line i'm not sure what it exact wording is. I think it says uh, those are orange ones? I mean, yeah. I mean, we can't put it off property, you know. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. so it's, yeah. all, it's the best we can do in this situation. And uh, I mean, and it doesn't have to be granite. It could be one of those poured concrete, too. Right. Just in case. Right. Right. So it sounds like everyone cost. is not saying that's too far away. So let's uh, go forward with that. I just want to be consistent, I guess, and what delineates what areas of concern we have. So if it's putting something else there that says, this is what we want to prevent, you know, but it's not a granite boundary, it's not this, it's not that. It's, it's, this is not the 25-foot barrier. So we supply those free of charge. You could ask the applicant to just put in the stone or granite granite or concrete bound um, and affix some sign that we approve. Sure, I'm, I'm fine with that. Whatever kind of formulation of protecting the area we come up with, but you just want to send mixed signals to people what this marker means, what that marker means. Every yeah. property, the marker means something. Yeah. yeah. Well, there well, there are so. times that we're not on the 25 <laughs> foot line because some we have to be the best. on the 35 feet. Okay. The best so thing. In, so as long as not, this is not a departure from things we've done in the past, and that's fine. We put them in different. Yeah, we put them up further, and I've gone on properties when they haven't been on the 25 foot line. I've got confused, and I yeah. understand the signage yeah. thing. So let's make a uh, make a condition that will put 
we'll leave it the way it is and and then uh, ask the applicant to provide some appropriate signage for it. Final yeah. Make a motion to issue as amended. Or Second. Discussed. All those in favor? Okay, 720, notice of intent, 70 128 Fairchild Drive, map 45, lots 2, Doppler, and uh, this is the first time we've seen this. Chuck? Okay. Uh, public hearing um, for 128 Fairchild Drive is now opened and being conducted concurrently on the authority of Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, Chapter 131. Section 40, as amended in the Reading General Bylaws, Section 7.1. Hearing is conducted the following manner. Applicant presents proposal. Commission will receive reports from the administrator, technical advisor, and other town departments. Um, commission will address questions and comments to the applicant, and the public will then begin the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant, which should be directed to the chair, and I'm the chair, Rebecca Longley. Give your name and address before your comments or and or questions are presented. There is an attendance sheet in the um, back corner. Uh, anybody wishing to speak should sign that. Okay. okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Can Thor Akerley. Yeah, sure. I'm here uh, from Williamson's Garages representing Michael Doppler and his home at 128 Fairchild Drive in Reading. Hey. The applicant is hoping to create a little bit more of a backyard in the rear of this property. Right now you can see it, it slopes down pretty dramatically towards the house and towards the BBW at the lower elevations. It also has a paved in rich in wall on this edge down here. And what we do is to pick up the grade in this spot about three to four feet. And install paper patio, stairway up to the bed way off of this open area to another paver walkway underneath the, the deck. Up here is going to be cut into the hill that's existing right now will be cut into. Um, the grade will be dropped up here at the peak. It's, it's, it'll, it's proposed at 122 and slopes down to about 118 to allow water to, to flow back towards the BBW. A small retaining wall, less than four feet high, is going to be or is proposed along this edge to help retain everything on the uh, high side of that. And I know um, we try to keep as many trees in the buffer zone as we can in, in Reading. Um, so while we are removing 19 trees, we're proposing uh, a total of 37 plantings, 11 of which are arborvitae, which are trees. Um, the remaining eight uh, will be over-replicated in the two-to-one uh, preference in the bylaw with shrubs. All of these are the shrubs, these are the arborvitaes up here. These are all the planting areas. Um, and like I mentioned, the eight, there's eight remaining um, trees to be replicated that are removed. And we're proposing 26 shrubs aside from the arborvitae. Um, a small portion of the existing deck is going to be ex is pro proposed to be expanded out. This section right here, so the existing stairway down to the lawn will be removed along with the, a small brick patio area that's beginning to fall apart a bit here. I should also mention that these the existing trees that are being removed, uh, 16 of 19 trees are less than 10 inches in diameter, breast height, 12 are pines, and a good number of them are already starting to lean towards the house, as I know uh, you guys saw the other day. So we hope that either replication and, and enhancement to the buffer zone, um, modest grading and retaining wall along this edge down here is uh, acceptable to the commission. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, yeah, so I, how many, how many trees are being removed? Uh, 19 total. Total of 19, okay. And what did you say about under 10 CBH? Uh, 16 of them are 10 inches or less CBH. We 
and your replacement for those are and trees. Eleven arborvitaes, um, tree counted as trees, and then twenty-six shrubs, which is well over one to one, and then the twenty one given for shrubs in the in the bylaw. So eleven, twelve. And then I should I should also mention that this uh, hatched area up here, this whole area is going to be landscaped as well by a, a landscape architect. So another improvement for portions of the buffer zone. And there, there are additional trees above this in the landscape plan as well. So there's a spruce we're planning on putting in front of the arborvitae, and then there's a pear tree. Seven. So there are two additional trees that are in our landscape plan currently that aren't showing. So you're adding two trees, okay? Yeah, there are there are two additional trees. Are you, are you it's within the buffer zone too. No, I'm the homeowner. Oh. <laughs> so we, we were here last year. This. Uh, this component of the wall, we had a negative determination on an RDA for last year. Mm -hmm. um, but when we couldn't get that done in the timeline last year, it was really rainy last fall and the, the landscapers couldn't get to it. Uh, we wanted to level the yard at some point anyway. And given the, the process, we wanted to just move that forward at, at this point. Was well, that retaining wall that is disintegrated, is that going to be repaired? Yeah, that, that'll be replaced, be replaced as, part of this project? as part of this project, yeah. So we're essentially looping in the previous negative determination into the, the new project, which requires a notice of intent, not an RDA. Do you, uh, so your contractor, when he uh, builds a retaining wall, what's that process that he takes in? I know on the plan it says, do you have a stockpile area? I thought a plan I looked there's at. There's a silt plant or a silt fence drawn on there, and there's. A, do you have the the proposal? Do I have it on this plan? The uh, the silt fence plan. Right there. Yeah, the siltation line will be below the retaining wall, so mm -hmm. any any work associated with that will be. There'll be a silt fence and a, and a mulch sock, so the risk of siltation to the wetland will be pretty minimal. As far as stockpiles goes, everything taken up from here is going to be shipped out direction, um, and then all this will be restored afterwards with the landscaping. I'm having a hard time understanding exactly which trees are going to be removed. Yeah. I'm sorry, if you could walk it through. It's um, these black dots here. You know, it's kind of hard to see, and some of them, some of the plantings are actually shown right over them. Uh, but it's these uh, gotcha. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let me see if I can zoom in on that. And so it's, so it's all the ones in that area? Right. It's grading. It's going to change and, and the wall has to be put in. Exactly. And a lot of them are pines already. They're starting to lean. Okay. And eventually they're going to have to be removed for the right. safety of the house. How many was it? 19? It's 19. 19. 19 total. This one's this one's staying. This one's an oak. Um, I think it was an 18 or 20 inch oak. So uh, all the uh, access is going to be on the west side of the house. Yeah, right down the, through the here. west front. So if you're looking at your plan here, we're going to have to come in there. Mm -hmm. uh, there is some chance now. Originally, we were expecting the retaining wall to be done. The access may come over. Depending on how they stage the walls and the grading. So you might go in, could, both, it's up in both, the air at this both point, directions. both directions, sure. Both directions, but if you needed to limit it to one access point. Um, the I'm just worried that you might cause some additional repairs that, that are needed, but I guess with the erosion control and the fact that you're fixing <laughs> that retaining wall anyways. Right. It's it's currently it's basically just falling over into the and they're they're gonna have to excavate back four feet off that retaining wall anyway. Mm -hmm. Uh just in order to get enough area to yeah, place the gravel down it so it doesn't collapse again. <laughs> I have a question about your deck just when I was on site. Um, you have a proposed deck expansion there. Do you have adequate running at height? Below the stairs, to clear that proposed deck expansion. I don't know what the requirement is. Pardon? I don't know what the requirement is. You need two inches. Uh, and you're coming down the stairs. You have to, that little, actually, right where you have the arrow that says proposed deck expansion. 
Is there enough money to set height to clear that? Yes. Yeah, it's quite high, actually. Quite yeah. high. Quite high yeah. I'm talking about when you're coming down the stairs. Oh, so the, these stairs yeah, the are stairs, stairs will be relocated. relocated. Oh, there's not going to be any stairs. stairs. Will be here. This will be the new oh, the new deck. I, uh, that's okay. I didn't realize the stairs were being removed. No, we we were trying to the the push out is essentially within the stair line, a couple feet beyond it. But the relocation of the deck stairs is into the flattened area. I thought that those were set, those stairs was simply the stairs that were coming down off of the patio into the lower area. Yeah. That wasn't really clear. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. So uh, I guess now I see what you're saying uh, here, Dave. Take me through what elevate, like the deck is. It's basically second story level. Second so story. We, we, have a, we have a tuck under garage that enters into the basement <laughs> level. The deck is on our first floor level, which is above that. Okay. So, at this level, this is the equivalent in height with our, our basement. Actually, probably a little lower, about four inches or so. That's the level. Uh, that's equivalent with our first floor. So I'm guessing that's 10 feet, but not to the bottom boards. I'm assuming we're doing two by sixes or two by eights when you frame this, depending on the spans. Um, there was no, there was no directional arrows on the stairs, so it was yeah. difficult for me to see. I thought those both of those stairways <laughs> were actually coming down in that four foot exactly. retaining wall down onto the driveway area. Yeah. And I thought that the stairs were remaining. The stairs that so, yeah. so the the stairs have currently on the deck were the stairs staying. coming from deck <clears throat> are gonna go from the second level even further down you know, down to this one so oh, I guess that's so it, it'll be so a, it'll uh, be a shallower. Okay. Span. So got it. Right. Short span, come down, another yeah. short span exactly. down. I'm right. sorry, I'm, I'm yeah, so this is misinterpreting the wall on the other side there. Okay. So Perfect. I think this is six stairs if you count them. Yeah. So that, that'll be six stairs down, walkway, and then oh. this is seven oh. stairs. Got it. All right. That's what I I thought the existing deck stairs, because there's no shaded on my drawing. I thought existing deck stairs were staying where they were. That's okay. why I asked. Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely confusing. I okay. can see why. Yeah. Okay. So we, uh, while we're on the tree, so do you mind just taking like the red marker there and Xing out the 19 where we're going? Yeah. So, sorry. So 15, 18, 16, 19, and 17. I thought I could have done that better, but uh, 15 through 19. Can you talk about those trees? <laughs> Where did I put 16? Uh, it's down below that. Oh, yeah. 15. So what, what's the reason? Are those healthy trees at this point? Or do you know if they're like Norway maples? <coughs> Um, I don't believe any Norway maples. I know a couple of them are pines. There is, there are a couple of deciduouses there. Um, I believe there were oaks. I hope them was okay. I don't think there was any severe issue with them, but with the retaining wall uh, going there, it would um, make sense to, to keep this as a little bit more of a yard area, if they can. Uh, again, we hope with the, with the excessive plantings, it would be acceptable to so that, that green area is showing where a new plant will go, so all a new these, shrub or tree. All of these colored areas. Yeah. So you're really just kind of getting rid of those because it doesn't meet up with the new landscape plan. No, part, part of it, I think, and is a lot, of, a lot of the trees are leaning, yeah. uh, which, which makes us nervous, yep. uh, especially on, uh, on windy and, and snowy, the, the heavy yep. snowy days. Uh, a lot of those trees don't feel very safe, particularly all the ones on this side of the house. Mm -hmm. Uh, because the stove, that, that slope, uh, our, our existing yard runs here, and when you get into this area here, it jumps up on the slope. It's a pretty dramatic slope if you guys, I know, I know you were out there, Chuck, and I think you were as well, Rebecca. Uh, 
that, that slope's pretty high and all those trees are starting to, to tilt as if they're starting to slide down that slope. Oh. And that's pretty consistent back here. One of the trees that worries me the most, uh, not necessarily falling in our house, but obviously falling in the wetlands, is one of the trees back here, which is basically growing sideways at this point at an angle. So with a, with a four foot trench you have to dig for the retaining wall, it seems like 15, 18, and 19 would be in jeopardy anyways. Yeah. Right. So that only leaves 17, so. All right. Um, and so, do you remember what 17 was? It might say it on your plan, but it's hard to read on the projector. No. Sixteen inch deciduous. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know exactly what it was. Mm -hmm. Remember what was out there? Sugar maple. Can I ask about the um, patio inside the circle? On this one here? Yeah. Is that going to be demolished? And we we'd like to remove that and move it upstairs. Yeah. It's really just bricks right now and a little pit in the middle. It's, a fire pit. it's not it's not not very safe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Not, 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 see not very safe for the kids. Yeah. It's uh, it's an in ground fire pit. Just have flat level grass back there. And plus with this retaining wall being the one that uh, that collapsed, um, I'd rather make sure we're limiting the water that's flowing back there. Uh, even though the new retaining wall would be built better. It just gives the chipmunks places to dig. A lot of chipmunks in our yard. So when we were out on the site, one of the things I was having a hard time trying to visualize was how you were leveling off this terraced area by, you know, by the retaining, above the retaining wall, right? So this, this retaining wall is 48 inches mm -hmm. tall. Um, this retaining wall would also be plus or minus 48 inches tall. Uh, we could do it at three feet tall, um, but the grade here would be pretty steep and then we'd probably worry about the arbor vitae uh, tilting as well. Uh, but you could do that at three. We, we've looked at the numbers on doing that. Um, but essentially when you, you're gonna cut in here four feet and then you're gonna build this up four feet, and overall there's roughly an eight and a half to a 10 foot grade change. So you're gonna keep some grade going down. I don't have my landscape plan, but it shows the, how that works and how it works. So are there any other, any other trees within the 100-foot buffer um, on that landscape plan that may be coming out that we're not seeing on this plan because I guess it wasn't developed because kind of above, I don't know, the corner of the house really doesn't... And I know you said that you're developing a landscape plan for up there and in the front. Yeah, we're, we're doing everything in the front. Um, but most of what we have in the front is stain, mm -hmm. or it isn't in the 100-foot buffer zone. Uh, I think we have a Kwanzaa uh, cherry that uh, is dying that we replaced with another Kwanzaa cherry. If that died, we'd like the tree, uh, which is in the very front of the house. So actually, that's, that's probably within the 100 foot zone, but that's not for this phase of the project. The only thing we at this point is this here. And these were the only other two trees that I'm aware of. We have a tree here that's in between our yard and our acreage The tree they actually have to put up. We're not taking that out. Uh, just the areas that are accessed or dug out. Just so I, I'm, I'm clear, because I'm just putting some of this. What's, where is the existing retaining wall versus the proposed, and what's knowing that there's a little bit of confusion so with the RDA and... I, uh, this retaining wall is existing, yep. but it's collapsed right yeah. here. Uh, this retaining wall to this point right here is existing. That's existing. It's a stone wall. It's only about a foot tall. Okay. <clears throat> um, this section here is new, and then this entire section here is new. Okay. And this, this, the one foot tall stone wall is now going to be replaced with a four, four foot, foot 
brick, four foot high concrete block retaining wall. Or stone. Yeah. Or stone. Ideally stone. Yeah. Um, awesome. So there's new portions of this that are within the 35 foot then, right? That are existing. There's that are exi I guess this is what I'm trying to clear up, right? I, I they're, they're already there. The both the retaining wall that's existing, that's deteriorated and fallen down, and that that stone wall are already existing on the site now. But what the addition to the deck and the paver patio and the stairs are not. I don't know that that's no, what I'm. I don't know that's right. how I'm understanding. Yeah, I, I guess there's this there's this arm that comes around. That's going to be new retaining wall. Yes. And then you know, it was a, a one foot stone wall, but, and now is a, a four. So it's there's a difference. I guess I, I'm trying to understand of like repairing a wall that that I think is, that has collapsed and needs repair versus taking a one foot wall and turning it into a four foot wall. And the, the objective of using the four foot wall and the other wall that's cut into the bank is to somewhat level that part of the yard even more. But usable yard space. So Mike, I think this piece is, is new. Like, yeah. I guess I, I guess what I'm getting at is, are we going to require a variance? Like, I'm, I'm looking at pieces of this that may require a variance, correct? Right. Okay. That correct, Chuck? That, I think it's, I think it's just, you're still retaining this piece, that one foot retaining wall coming down from the patio? The, this piece here? Yeah. Yeah, so that, that wall would just be taller. It's going to be in the same spot, but it would just be taller. It's the same line. The, the only addition is this here, okay. which is to support the grade change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because otherwise you'd have a ton of erosion if we put a wall there and okay. have a steep drop. So that will require a variance. And again, it, it is going to be less than four feet, so it wouldn't count technically as a structure, you know, as a, as a buildable structure, probably a building permit. It's really just to retain some extra soil. But we still, we still require, it is considered a structure for us because it, to us it's, it has to do with um, even though that is law and philosophically it is affecting the root system. So that's what, you know, that's why we had that in our bylaw, correct? It, yeah, so uh, the 35 foot is for, um, for the minimum. We could ask for more of, of uh, protection for that area. The 35 feet is the minimum and it's, uh, so no structures within that area and if you're going to be in that area, and what you have new is that section of retaining wall. I feel like the entire turn retaining wall was already decided upon, so that's not part of it. But the uh, stairwell and the, the walkway, some whatever new section of the deck. So there's a section in our regulations that you go through it request a variance for. Us. But it does it does qualify for pay variance. It just has to be uh, it just has to go through the process. Okay. E even though there aren't really many trees in this area as of right now, it's just a Yeah, I mean in general we've tried to avoid having retaining walls built within that thirty five foot thirty five foot zone. Even if it's four foot, you know, the less four foot, okay. four foot and it has to be designed by an engineer. Greater than four foot has to be designed by an engineer. A little bit different than what we're talking about from a structure within that system. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question? The addition to the small, the one foot wall that runs perpendicular to your house towards the existing wall, does that die and degrade? It goes around the corner. It's just it's it's, it's going to stay it. So this this hill falls into that wall. Uh, the the. Well, what happens at the very end of the wall? Is it just what is it? It just it stands. It just grades out. It's a hill there, right? So once so what, once you get to the end of the wall, it just drops down. 
Okay, but at the very end of the sweep to the left? There's no sweep to the left now. There's there's no sweep here right now. The, the wall terminates where this Okay, but comes when you do put the new section in, if you do, yeah. that, when that ends, as you look at the drawing to the left, does that die into gray? That wall stops. It would, there's something yeah. on the other. Is that four feet off the ground right there, or did you tow it into the slope? So this is towed into the slope. Well, that's what I meant by dying. Right. Great. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. All right. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. One other question I had, and I, I don't really know the answer, and I don't 100 percent know. Um, they already announced the full consequence, whether it is. But is this within the aquifer protection district? It is not. Hopefully. It's not. Is there a note on the. Not for, not for many of the maps I've seen. Yeah, no, I don't believe it is. Because sometimes, I mean, in it. Sometimes it's a zing issue, sometimes it's. Um, it comes into play with um, impervious lot area in the past. But. Um, but I know the town has amended some of the, has changed some of the zoning designations and rules. So, um, might be worth looking into. Yeah, no, I, it would, if it was, it would have been on the plan. I don't, and I don't believe it is. I can't, I just can't see the town in the corner right here. Because, so here, I can, um, this zoning map has, so the Aquifer Protection District is there. Okay. You guys are near this PRD-G. I think that is actually where the well is. And we're kind right. of right on the inside of that cul-de-sac. Right, you're actually like in between the RD and the street. Yeah. yeah. So um, <laughs> it is an overlay district. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, and we are adding, it's got very little impervious compared to what's existing. <laughs> Any questions from the CONCOM? Any further questions? Comments? Any questions from the community? So uh, I think just to add to the variance piece, you know, that has a, it, it's not just within the, the 35 foot zone, but it's within the 20, this, this well, arm. You know, I, I would say that it's been, I've generally seen it uh, uncommon that this com this commission has allowed something within that that zone. So it's just something I think the applicant should think about within looking at this piece of it with the variance is is there ways to get even if they go forward with the variance is there ways to get the new wall outside of the 25 at the very least um, and still achieve what they're looking for. Um, Now, now I'm confused because on the plan it says exist, and this I didn't put in that. That's, that's, okay. that's, that's, that's the why, point. That's why okay. um, that's why this I wanted to stop and okay. go over this. Okay. Right. So. Understood. This was this was exist. I guess it's following. Because normally I'd go along with you, Mike, but since it's exist and so much of that retaining wall that's now destroyed is already existing and it's well within the 25 foot line I don't think it's warranted to make a change in this one here to make it compliant with the 25 foot zone that's just my opinion yeah my, my guess is, is when the house was built this wasn't in the 25 foot zone they, yeah they, <laughs> that was part of the bylaw came in <coughs> probably after this was put in about the 25 and 35 foot. But I, I think Dave makes a good point in, in the sense that any kind of mitigation or whatever you want to call it or, or correction of this design here is almost moved compared to the existence of that wall that's already well within the 25 foot. It's not like we're doing any additional damage. But so the existing wall is grandfathered. Uh, I right. mean, and, 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 it, and if, it, if it's in disrepair, it should be repaired. <coughs> that's just better off. I think that's very different from that, from having asking for a new structure or continuing that length 
or or making it over. I I, I see a distinction. I don't I don't see a purposeful one, but that you I would suggest that you're incorrect because you are correct. But I don't know what the point of not allowing that would be given what exists there now. It's not it's it's going to have zero impact on the environment basically given what's already there. I guess that's how I think of it. So th there's a little mixed guidance. I, I think I, I would ask that the applicant at least think about what, what the options are. I think that the commissions will, I don't know that we've even quite agreed if, if the the comfort level with the inside the 25 foot zone. So I, I think you could go back. There is a process associated with the variance. There's steps that you have to go through. I, I think you need to look at that. Um, I would just ask for you to consider it. If, and if there's no option, then then come back before us with with what, what you've got. Uh, uh, but I, I think it needs some some other thought. So. I think realistically, the best that's doable is just moving this in a couple feet. And if we're talking a few feet, um, I don't really see that there's going to be much of an impact, you know, good or bad, on the resource areas. Either. Could could you instead of moving it at all? I, I mean, you're going to need the variance. I get that, Mike. So because you're, you're, it's a new structure that we haven't talked about before. Are you are you having two walls to um, to be able to do this project without getting a building permit? Because the combination of both heights would be over four feet. So if you brought that wall that comes from the house tied it in to the new retaining wall that's up against the wetland and then raise that area to this, this area here? Well, if you this is four feet right and this is less so you come you're gonna have this at three feet or two or whatever it is and then just right next to it you're gonna have another two feet so what the building department's worried about is can that wall hold back all that material? And I'm just saying, even though you split it into two different walls, the combination of that height is so close to, to each other is still over four feet, isn't it? Well, we have had our engineers look at it. Um, and I know that, you know, you, you could be worried about this, but as a retaining wall, this, it, it does slope down a little bit down here. So the material there is a little mm -hmm. less. Um, but I, yeah, I, no, I, I assume that it's, going to work with your right. engineers, but with our, uh, kind of how our town operates, is that something that probably well, should nice. be uh, talked to the building commissioner about to make sure that he doesn't want to review it? Yeah, the, the reason we're doing it, it, it isn't because of that. Our, our driveway slopes down, and this section of the yard is level with our basement level. Uh, if we lifted this up in uh, conjunction with the whole yard, this would be above the level of the driveway. So here to support the new yard uh, separately and this whole area would lift up so the whole point was you know we were lifting this area so we could just cut into the hill the slope that was the point for this wall um, we were just trying to run it along the existing, the existing wall here. so it was at least an act of the and we wanted to direct the stairs and but there was no thought process about trying to keep this under, you know, perfect. It was about lifting this area to minimize the top. Yeah. Because we have a ledge here. So we're going to have to cut through the ledge. We're trying to minimize the ledge. We're trying to make it as flat as possible and this wall as short as possible. Sure. Okay. Uh, the only thing I had to add to this is um, some of the new landscaping plan is going to be in the buffer zone. It is something that we need to look at. When is that to be ready? I have it. I didn't give you a copy. It is, so it is ready, yeah. Okay, so uh, we need, between the two meetings, we're going to need that landscaping plan, the variance, for you to check out the Aquifer Protection District and ask the building commissioner about that two areas of the retaining wall just to make sure it's not an issue. And it doesn't come up when you're ready to move forward. You're ready to get out of the way now. That whole landscape plan mm -hmm. so I can show you what the architect's drawn up. But there's a, there's a lot more plannings on there, and, and, and ideally, where he has a lot of plannings that are with the mulch beds, uh, we'd like to put more grass if it's available, and how the, the ledge removal goes. It's, it's always okay if you do less. 
but anything that happens in the buffer zone we need to look at within this process on this permit. So you, you can do less and you can change it, and the further away you are, it's yeah. going to matter less. Perfect. So, but we would like to see it, and, and we can't look at it tonight. So if you could just get back to us and these other things, I need. Thank you. Any other questions, comments from the commission? Any from the community? Hearing none, do I hear a motion to continue? Make a motion to continue. Second. All those in favor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <coughs> next item on the agenda is a request for determination of applicability for 35 Arcadia Avenue, map 19, lots 8, Steenbruggen. Yep. Just tell me what you want to start with. Uh, uh, just uh, uh, yeah, we can go with the existing conditions. Um, so I bought this residence in December. Um, both, side, both properties on either side are, are pretty much cleared, and I've got forest um, with the river behind. I want to take down, i got a bunch of pines uh, that are pretty much dead and uh, in pretty rough shape. Um, I want to put a fence in. I want to put some, more, some grass or yard in. Um, I want to replace the driveway with the retaining walls that are there and expand the driveway if possible and put a fence in. Sure. So um, so that's the existing conditions. Yes. One of the things that's going is proposed in this uh, order is to expand the driveway. Expand the driveway. So right now we have a two car uh, driveway. I want to expand it out so I can put a doorway on the side of the garage instead of there's no way to get in the garage unless you open the two big garage doors above the two big garage doors a bedroom so in the winter time you open it up it gets real cold so i would like to be able to put in a, just a do you know expand the driveway over and put a door in the driveway would be expanded over a full car length so it'd be 11 feet new fence yep uh i'd like to be able to it probably won't be this summer maybe next summer but fence in the backyard um, it would either be stockade or a vinyl fence. Does the fence go beyond the proposed new lawn area? No. So it's it's at, it's going to be it's going to be at the 25 foot buffer. So, so the, the line new proposed yes. edge of lawn. Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, new proposed yep. lawn. Yep. So. This is We're going to move it, move it back. I'm with. I'll be at the 25 foot buffer from the river edge, or the or the or the berm, top of the berm. So that dark line at the bottom is the Abichona River. The straight line is the proposed, proposed uh, zone of natural vegetation between the river and that straight line. And then everything above the straight line to that is going to be cleared and new lawn would be put in. I'm just going over the proposal. I uh, have proposed work here again, so I'm not really sure what this is. So that was just a, a better, bigger view of the the lot from both sides. So that's a good one. So I'll remember that one. Uh, so removal? Yeah, so we have trees that were cut yep. um, at the beginning. Yep. The trees that you see circled there were were cut down in December, something like that. October. This, October Before 2018. Prior to prior to buying the house, these trees were taken down. They are in the 200 foot riverfront, the outer riparian area, and there's a total of 16 trees that were taken down at, at this time. Um, not all. Large trees. I think the large trees were the ones that were circled. There at were that five time. large trees. 
trees taken down, uh, one of which snapped in the spring of the year before and took out the neighbor's car and some of his garage. Is that your recollection of the size of those trees, Chuck? I, Chuck and I were out there mm -hmm. on Tuesday. Um, did you count, how many did you count that were cut? 16. 16. Yeah. Um, above six inches? Oh, yeah. Uh, let me just think for a second. There, there's a difference. If you see stumps, some of those stumps were bushes that were grown way out of control. They were, um, if, if, can you go back to that aerial shot? The big, the, the full one? So you'll see, um, yeah, go to that one. So there was a, a dead maple here, a dead maple here. There were two pines here that were taken down. All the other stuff was overgrown yew, but uh, I think they use. Yeah. Uh, they were just, they were 12 feet high. Their stumps are this big around. That's what was all along this, along this edge. And then there was one other tree here that was taken down. I mean, we can look at the, the, the stumps, they're still standing up. The stumps yeah, are still in. We did see the stumps. <laughs> yeah, so they're, they're, they weren't trees, those were bushes. There were a few small saplings that were taken down back here. Um, but the, this, this line here was a lot of bush and two big pines that we took down. And then, um, so, so we typically measure things based on DBH, which is the diameter of something at breast height. So in the in the in the final, there's a couple trees we're gonna end up leaving. I, I believe we're gonna end up leaving this tree, which was originally issued to be take, thinking of taking down, but we're gonna have it pruned uh, because it is hanging was on that, to the house. Is that an oak? It's a chestnut, I think. Black oaks. Remember? <laughs> I'm not sure. What no, the, the I'm, black I don't know the, was the out, trees. Out the oh, it's the other side. It was out towards the river. The, there was a black locust out. Uh, I, I, I don't know what type of tree it is, but it's definitely not a pine. It's, it could be an oak or a pine. It, it, yeah. I don't know the type of tree. But it's big, but it, it needs to be pruned just because it's it's sitting, some of the branches are sitting on the house. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we're going to prune up. Um, the trees that are here, this line that are here, are pines that are, you saw the massive and... But there were four dead, dead ones and yeah, then, and then the, that yeah, the one huge one, yep. big one, mass one. Mm -hmm. yep. Now there is another one, and uh, uh, this is when I went back out after you guys went out. Um, there's a tree that's here that's on the town property. I don't care if you want to take it down or not, but this is that's what it looks like. I will take I will take it down on my dime if you want to take it down a tree like that. That's a pine. Split trunk and track pine. Looks like a big Y. Yep. Yeah, but yeah. It's, it's, it's on the river's edge. I it doesn't matter to me, it won't hit my house, but right. it's just a dangerous tree. It's gonna I, I split. Prefer, personally, I prefer mm -hmm. I know we get a lot of feedback from Robert Moses on the, the splits. But this is on the bank of the Abidjan mm -hmm. River and we're talking about the inner and outer riparian zone. And the inner riparian zone is from the top of the bank in a hundred feet mm -hmm. it is supposed to be a, a natural mm -hmm. vegetated and you are proposing to take out most of the vegetation um chuck looked at um you you flagged some trees back there with plastic yep i did yep and i'm gonna leave those okay so I, I took the pictures of the, so I could okay. be sure I yeah. knew what I was looking at. That, the only reason I said that tree um, was just because of the split. If they don't want to take that, I have no problem leaving it. It just was a splitted tree. And I, don't, I don't know. It's up to you. It's totally up to you guys on that one. I think that we only had two commission members out there. So that's probably 50 feet of kind of natural area, it was not in the best shape. The, 
I mean, there was an opening that you didn't like. Yeah. The, I didn't. I didn't like the fact that they had those pine trees all lined up, kind of a windrow, but four of them were dead. Mm. And that just makes you think that they're growing too close to each other, and the rest of them are going to die too. So that's just going to happen to all those trees. It's you know looking into the future, but but it, it could it could happen. So four dead now, probably another four in a couple years, and then they'll all be gone. Would it would it be pertinent to replace it with something other than a pine? Well. There was a, there was a, opening. Um, no, no, no. You, I can try to go to the aerial no, if you come want. Back down, yeah. down this way. Yep. Yeah, down this way. Yeah, right in there. Yeah. It's very scrubby. Not any. There were no mature trees, and I think Chuck and I were thinking that perhaps maybe this would be an area to plant some things. So this is the one that they wanted to save. That was on that side? Yep, right. And then this was the one on the other side? Mm -hmm. Jesus. Yep. Um, and this would, the line would go across, that was where the line was. So that's what I just wanted to verify because mm -hmm. I, I wasn't there when you did the walk. But I, I, that would, I have no problem leaving those trees. Mm -hmm. And I have no problem if we want to put up, you know, something that would be a little. Um, zoom in on that. towards the back of the lot. I'd like to, right now, it's, it, everything's really close up to the house. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to pull back so I have some part of the yard that's... Um, and you're taking out that s silver maple that's really close to the house, right? Yeah, that has that big hole in it. Um, there's, this, there's two trees right here. Right. This one I'm going to keep. Mm -hmm. the, those two I was going to take out. And then down and back here, if you notice, you, you saw all the vine that's attacking the trees. Yeah, that's we're gonna cut all, sweet. We're gonna cut all that cut all that out, get that cleaned up. I also noticed when I was in the back there that, that there seemed to be several um, saplings that were seemed to be twenty five feet within twenty five feet of the bank that have already been cut down. Several ash, a couple of maple trees. Who cut those down? I, again, there was cut before I moved in. I bought the I, I passed papers on the property on the twenty of uh, the twenty uh, eighth of December, or uh, the eleventh. Sorry, the eleventh of December. And I know the tree guys were here in October. Yeah. This is this is well mm. beyond yeah. the yeah. big trees that were cut down. This yeah, is they're like right. saplings. Pardon? They're saplings. Yeah. Yeah, I think there is in that area, and, and I think that's what Becky was talking about, like revegetate that area. Yeah. That's the one thing she didn't say was because I think there was like six or seven of those trees cut down. They're still there. So still I asked down. for none of this yeah. area to be cleaned up. Yeah, we And that's why anything. you can still see the trees there. You can see, you know, so, so that's, that's what, why it's like that. Um, so, it, you know, there, there's a lot of trees. There's 30 trees we're talking about, 16 that were removed, 14 that um, that are proposed. But you have to see the site. The 14, but also minus four. The four dead. Four dead. <laughs> yeah. And we're pretty brutal figuring out four dead trees. There might be seven dead trees <laughs> out of those. So who knows? They're, they're just too close. Here's the stand right here. In this area, those yeah. those are dying. Oh, look at that! The, the, I think there's four there. I think three of them are already dead. Hey, yeah, three or three or four. Yeah. yeah. Four dead. Hey Chuck, on that plan, can you just give me a ballpark of what the hundred foot riparian zone versus the two hundred foot riparian zone looks mm -hmm. like? I mean, I know it's not going to be exact, but. goes to the house. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, I don't know if you, this, home, this the prior homeowner was Bob Lotzenheiser. He was the meteorologist from town. He was 103, so nothing really maintained in probably 25 years. I, he worked for NOAA. Yeah, yeah, but he was also... Oh, was he state? Yeah, yeah but he had that title. Did he? Yep. He's still alive. Wow. Living in living at Bench Park and Uber. Those slides pretty close together, but can you see one goes just about to the back of the house, the 100-foot okay. bank, and the okay. other one goes out into the path on the other side of the street. Okay, so... I was just sort of refreshing. We don't uh, we don't get too many pure riverfront type of projects. So I was just refreshing the regs here in my mind. And in order to make a claim of no significant adverse impact, um, there is a so it's a lot of within 200 feet foot riverfront area issuing authority may allow the alteration of up to 5,000 square feet or 10% of the riverfront area on the lot, whichever is greater. Um, but provided that, at a minimum, a 100 foot wide area of undisturbed vegetation is provided. And it says if there is not a 100 foot wide area of undisturbed vegetation within the riverfront area, existing vegetation co vegetative cover shall be preserved or extended to the maximum extent feasible. Is that, so if we're saying, my question is, is I'm a, I believe I'm 130 feet this way. Yeah. And I'm 25 feet off. So it's distance from the top distance, of the bank. Distance, not, not square footage. You no, said 100, it's distance I it's from the top of the bank, it's as distance I said before. From the, distance from the yeah, top that's what I'm saying. The top, I'm, I'm coming in from the top of the bank in 25 feet to put my fence and do nothing yes. beyond, nothing further than that. So when you were just reading, you were just reading if it was 100 square feet. No, 100 foot. Can feet. you see that 100 yeah. foot that goes mm -hmm. to the back of the house? Mm -hmm. The regs say if they say that needs to be vegetated with and kept vegetated. Okay. And if it can't, if it isn't, yeah. then whatever exists for vegetation mm -hmm. should, to the maximum extent feasible, be maintained. Okay. So, that's what we have to enforce. No, so you're saying that's the state regs. We haven't we haven't enforced just the state regs ever. There's a, there's a property just up the street. There might be two. I could look into it, but they have a. Uh, in one down. room, and I remember one clearly because I had to redo the order of conditions several times when they tried to record it that's why because there were typos in it. So we probably need to look up and down the street and see what's going on. But you know, people have the yards, but I, what I would like, I personally would like to see is, okay, yeah, I, and I think Chuck and I agree, and Dave probably too, there are some really <laughs> compromised, mature quality. trees <coughs> and poor Tree quality, quality. Yeah. but there is an area that's scrubby and open and I think there, here's an opportunity to make better a habitat. better habitat and you've cut down trees and we have a tree replacement policy so by our my law you're obligated to replace or you know um, make a donation to mm -hmm. the tree replacement fund but I, I think here's an opportunity Chuck can you weigh in I mean you're the one who pointed out that area that's like open it's nothing that there's scrubby stuff no, I'm, there. I'm not backing off from it I just I don't think you're gonna get the uh, hundred feet I don't think that's practical. I, I, I agree with you but that wasn't a hundred feet that was further back no, towards it's, it's, I mean the whole thing's about 50 feet I think we're 30 35 feet away um, so with with our line but I don't think the full Commission went out there I think you know maybe if there's some um, uh, there, 
there might be an opportunity for another site visit, you know, if everyone can get there to discuss it or to think about the one question. What needs to main, be maintained as a zone of natural vegetation and, and what what can be? We've already put our thoughts on it because I didn't have any tape with me, so we tied some plastic bags we saw flying around. Um, <laughs> So one at one end of the property and, and one at the other end of the property and what we wanted to do is make a line at that point and that line would encompass that area that was cleared that you talked about in Becky too and it, and it brought that 25 out to maybe 35, I think it's 35 something like that yeah. something like that and there was one tree that was like Two. 10 dbh it's only just there's one tree that was that was outside of that line and we wanted that cleared. So what would end up happening is in front of that line, which was not exactly what the applicant wanted, would be would be turned into grass and what was in back of it would be saved, but it's, it was more than 25 feet. Okay, so and it would be revegetated. Would members of the commission like to revisit this and maybe put some flags out at certain distances yeah, so, like so. so that we know what we're talking about there's also a slight break of slope in that backyard too it goes down from the house and then yeah i'm not planning on changing the slope levels it off a little bit so that might be something to look at too <laughs> so so i did want to show you that i drew out five thousand square feet can everyone see that So you could see what that would look like on the yard. So, so I do want to comment in terms of the work description. For me, some of the still unresolved parts are were like items one and two, um, pertaining to the tree removal um, and proposed trees, and then to the new lawn. Um, but to, in my opinion, I, I. Uh, it looks to me like items three and four, extending the driveway and replacing the retaining walls, those seem to be very easily done. It's just the first two that require a little bit more thought and review before we either approve or, or deny those parts. Can I just add, add to that because, you know, while I don't disagree with that, is this Let's let's start with what with what we have in front of us, and 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 if it we want to do another site visit to, to start, I'm fine with that. But is an RDA enough for this project? Um, if with all that's going on, or maybe we want to look at that more based on what's going on in the back. But I, I guess separate from if some of these things can go on, is an RDA appropriate? Question. <laughs> it's within the 200 foot riparian zone. It's a lot of work within the 100 foot work riparian zone. Yeah, yeah it is. And the 200. And, the two, and, and 200. And there's more impervious area in the 200. Uh -huh. I mean, so I, I, I think I think there's, you know, my, my personal take is I think there's room to work here. I, I, I see items that I don't really have issues with. I see items that, yes, if we want everybody all together to see it all at the same time, I, I'm fine with that. I guess the, the one thing I do see here is it, it seems like a lot of work just in general. I'm leaning towards that this should be, this should be a notice of intent. This should have the, the protections that we get with a notice of intent. I mean, Chuck, do you... Uh, is, is there... Do I, you, I was just kind of like thinking through the, what do you get with a notice of intent Will you, when you said that. Mm -hmm. So in a notice of intent, this would be considered um, previously developed. And um, so one of the things you can't do is e extend impervious surfaces and buildings closer. And so that's not happening with the driveway. So that would be allowed. That we would get is 5,000 square feet. So we would, we would be in that, in that area. We, could, we don't have to give all 5,000, but he, he can get it. He can get some part of it. So remind me, what, what is this 5,000 square foot thing? This is 
thing with it's Nico. alteration. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the alteration. Yeah, there's a there's a restriction as about um, how much ten percent or five thousand square feet. Okay. And, and you have to go through all the yeah. It's hands or butts on that. Yeah. Uh, and then. Is that a one time thing or per annum? For like every five years? It would be one time. Per lot. Per period? One time? Per lot, I think. What's I think the total square footage? On the lot. Yeah. So. so there's a. Well. The total square footage of. Of the lot? Of the lot? 20. Yeah. 20, just, just over 20,000. 20,065, I think. All right. So, so, so the five, if you draw that five line about twenty five percent into his backyard, you're about five thousand square feet. It's ten percent of the water. Less than fifty. Larger. 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 Less than fifty. Less than fifty thousand? Yeah. It says half an acre. Yep. So one quarter of that box, any way you cut it, I mean, obviously it, you would include the driver in the house as part of it, would you? Yeah, it's all part of it. It's all part of the lot. So, you know, we, we have the request for determination in front of us, and that's what it's used for to, if it's a positive determination, then it's basically says you have to have a notice of intent. If it's negative, then you, you didn't need a permit in the first place. But we always put conditions on it anyway. So I think we should go through this process and see what happens. Um, and then, you know, everyone should, should do a site visit because it seems like what Anika was doing seemed to make sense where the driveway is really not the problem. The fence is probably not the problem because we've allowed those before. Um, it's, it's, the, it's the amount of tree removal. It, tree removal doesn't fit under the tree guidance policy because there's been so many. And I think what we're going to come down to is we're going to come down to an opportunity to enhance a certain square footage of that area closest to the Abichona River. So the way I would look at this is if that can happen with a conversation with the applicant and come to an agreement, then there's really no need to go through anything else. Um, unless, you know, Mike, tell me exactly what we need. So the order of conditions will allow us to, you know, always have some control over this project because of that certificate of compliance. Um, it just kind of sits there and it activates when someone tries to refinance or sell the house, which is probably unlikely for a while in this case here. But that's the only way it happens. It can be out there for 25 years. And that's the only additional protection that we have. Uh, and if something goes wrong, the commission can always do an enforcement order and do a you know violation, something like that, and go go after it. But, but you know, those are the options. I think we should go through this first and find out what makes sense, because we've always try to make sense of what someone wants for a yard and what we want for habitat. So I think that line needs to be determined and then to see if there's some enhancement that can happen. So... Is the blue line the boundary with property? Or yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. <coughs> so that right in the area that you drew, 4,200 feet... That's what I'm trying to adjust. A little smaller, but it should be 5,000 if you're going to... Yeah, he has 800 more square feet somewhere. I just, yeah. I was doing a freehand. Well, basically, just cut the lot. It's a freehand, Bob. I probably didn't I was happy I got that close. Yeah. <laughs> um, I applaud the effort. Sorry. Yeah, thank I you. <laughs> I mean, the, the ultimate goal here for me is to enhance the property. The property's all around it. This one looks terrible. If you, if you, if you go down the street, all those is pretty nice, and this one has been left to neglect. And, um, we've done a lot of work on the inside, cleaning it out. Uh, 120 yards of trash. Yeah. So, and then we, we have. Guy, no. <laughs> My son's actually living there. 
as well. I think in terms of like, you know, the area we would probably prefer to see altered, clearly it's it's something farther away from the river. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, so that some sort of buffer is maintained between the river. Well this is this is river back. here. Right. So all that will be won't be touched. It's a lot of this is where I want to start. On the pines that are here that are dead, that those are in terrible shape. And then everything behind those pines is a lot of smaller. I mean, we could probably leave a few of those trees that are smaller, that are maples and things like that, but the, the pines are... Th this one tree here, I'm nervous that it's going to come down on the house. It's got a hole in it that, that big, and that tree is probably 40, 30 feet above the house, and it's 10 feet off the, the back okay, so, so what we've got is we want everybody to have an opportunity to, to yeah. take a look at this site at some point. We're clearly looking at different things, so I think the best opportunity, the best way is get us all there as best we can all together, have the come like work out the lines and see what what makes sense because... Are there any monuments on either different. side of your lot? That, that no. might delineate the back of the lot. It's not Not that we could see. No. The, o the only thing I could tell you is there's fences from the uh, neighbors. That's the only mark. <coughs> yeah. You have a uh, you have a plot plan? I do not have a plot plan. I don't have a certified plot. I have a plot plan for the mortgage, but that's it. Not a certified plot plan. I, I it might be registered land. If I'm going back to my memory when we did the the uh, the. Um, Mortgage. I think it's a registered plot, a registered land. So I think so. Usually, when land is registered, there's monuments that delineate the, the boundaries. Yeah. I, there's so much stuff back there. The, the leaves are probably two or three feet. The thing is, it would be helpful to, to to know where your property bound is, vis-a-vis -vis the edge of the bank. You know, mm -hmm. what is your property? What's not your property? You know, yep. Um, then to measure some distances from the edge of the bank up a certain distance into the yard to, to delineate and, and to really be able to, to know what we're talking about. I basically just took a ruler, a rolling ruler from the edge of the where the top of the bank was and went in 25 feet and then you came up with a, a little closer in, we're probably 30 feet in, and said there's the line. So I was notice of intents usually require stamp plans. Um, <laughs> so I think I think what we are looking for is a time when we can site visit and we're going to continue this so does any butter anyone here is in a butter that would oh, like to see sorry something? anybody uh, any questions we have discussed this uh, a, a bit a any questions any comments Yes, sir. Give, give I, I live to the left of them. Uh, my name is James Regan. My wife, Lee. I live at 43 Arcadia Rep. And, you know, him taking down those trees was a godsend because I'm the one that lost the house, the car, and almost our daughter. Two cars. Two cars. My daughter had just gotten out of her car, went in the house, and the tree fell on my car, her car. My house cost me a lot of money. Yeah. And... I mean, the, the place was a, a crap hole um, because they were elderly. Um, the neighbors helped out as much as we could. And then when Jim decided to buy it, we knew that, uh, you know, it was going to get cleaned up. When you're looking towards the river, are you on the right or the left? I'm on the left. So that, yes, the, the okay. line that was taken out on the left side, that was... Yeah. Yes, I lost the brand new car. My daughter, Two, my daughter lost her car. <laughs> Uh, I lost a roof. Significant thousands of dollars it cost yeah. us. Uh, so granite those, steps. Were those trees on his property? Yes. They were like well, they were right, right on, on the property, like right on the line. <laughs> <laughs> but notice was given by myself. I had three independent tree companies come out um, that everyone said that that was compromised because it was a giant hole. Just kept filling up with water. Um, I sent a certified letter via my insurance company <laughs> through me to the lot and Unfortunately, you know, they were elderly. Yep. Um, and they are now in assisted living, and the daughter that took over the, the estate did nothing about it until Jim moved in. 
um, bought the house and decided, I mean, it, it was dangerous. If it wasn't us, it was going to fall towards the street where we're, it wasn't we're just in a, that one tree. Yeah, a couple we're in a school district, you know, at the bottom of Barrows. Mm -hmm. So it could have, any, any wind storm was going to. So one more thing, Dave, you asked a question, where's the bank and where's this property line? It's yep. 18 feet away. Okay. 19 feet on one side and from the bank to where those trees are so the rest is lawn going forward to the house or you know ornamental trees is 76 feet so we're about 54 feet away yep. uh, of you know area that we're talking about or 70 feet so he's looking to extend that well, I thought you about here yeah no, I'm leaving about 10 12 feet I have a question. Is there anything about the 5,000 feet of what you want with kind of property that right, it says it has to be contiguous? Like you have a 1,000 square foot chunk here and a 1,000 square foot chunk here, and a, how does it have to be all the same 5,000 square feet, contiguous square feet? So the only thing I know that's kind of similar to that is, is one property can only split up that 5,000 square feet um, even if there's multiple permits, but you have to uh, you have to mention it in the permit to kind of like a homeowner can use that 5,000 square feet every single time they come back, unless you make that a continued condition that 2,000 square feet is gone. So oh. now it's only 3,000 the so, next time it comes up. So isn't that more? You, know, you, know, thing, you know why I'm asking. Those. But that didn't answer your question, but. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to say it. Um, it doesn't so, matter how you divvy it up. So can I? So then that that's actually advantageous because there's areas that you may not need to touch and still use a lot of them to get what he needs. I don't think he's got five thousand square feet that he's using. Yeah. So it's, I don't think so. This could, yeah. be, this could be kind of a. And I think within that area that he's using, there's a lot of trees that are compromised. And I, I'm fine with the approach that we're taking now, but isn't that more? even more reason that you want something on the record because if we uh, if we give a negative determination on 4,000 square feet today what's to stop a future homeowner or him coming back here and saying well I want another 4,000 square feet nothing I won't have 4,000 square feet more to give you well the property because if I mean if I'm 10 feet up well no 10 well he's above the he's above the 25 foot property anyway. Oh. And you, we were 50 we, feet. Isn't it once we... Well, no, that's true. I think we're... The, how could we restrict him? We could only restrict him through a notice of intent. And, that, and that's what you're saying. So if we really wanted to have a restriction to say no more lawn could be created on this property and it's, you know, it's it's going in perpetuity. Um, once you've delineated, uh, and I hate to just hop on the 5,000 square feet, but for the sake of example, once you've delinea delineated that area of the yard, whichever, however many chunks of area that is, then that's, that, I hate the word perpetuity, but that becomes part of the conditions of the lot forever, right? Not, no, well, we can write it in so, so it is, but you couldn't do that unless it was a notice of intent. And if it's not written in, such as we have a request for determination of applicability here, it's, he's good, whoever's going to get the next 5,000 square feet. But there's a bigger argument to say, I, I, I don't, I'm I mean, not saying who, who would restrict him anyways, every permit stands on their own and any commission can make their own decision. We should, shouldn't lock another commission into whatever their decision is going to be in the future based on what they see on this property. So that restriction is a little tough to, to uh, understand. If, if you see what I mean, you know, 20 years from now, it would be more, it would be still, still be important to have a 25 foot zone of natural vegetation unless someone changed it who was on the commission. And why should this gentleman not be, take advantage of it? Because, you know, this is similar to that, that tree rule that we have when you put in a, a new, uh, you know, when somebody's building a new property on a notice of intent, you say you can't come back and ask to take away this tree that we specifically said we didn't want to go away. I mean, that's, that's the idea is that everything would just creep. 20 years from now, everything would just creep, and then everything, it would just creep and creep and creep until it just goes away. I mean, the, the reason we put these things in here is so that is, it remains protected. Yes, a commission could still look at that 20 years from now and say, well, 
they did things differently, just like we look at what a commission did previously and say they did things differently and we can go, you know, make a different decision. But at least it's on the record that it happened. At least it's on the record okay. that it's there. Okay. Can I, can I just ask a question so I understand what's happening? A notice of intent versus a... We're not, we're I, not no, there. I know, but I'm just, I, I just want to understand what that rule means. I, do, I don't... A request for determination of applicability, if we said it was a negative and we had some conditions, mm -hmm. you'd be able to okay. you know, do your thing. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if we had said, oh, it's a positive determination, then you would have to file a notice of intent. Now you have to notify all your abutters, and it's a, it's a more rigorous application process. Okay. That's, I just wanted to understand yeah. what, that, what okay. that meant. I didn't know. But I'd like to, you know, table that conversation and really focus when we can, as a group, go out and take a site visit so we understand what's going on. So, um, anybody available Tuesday? Next Tuesday? Next Tuesday. Okay. 28. 28. Um, at 12. Or, okay, that's fine, but it's got to be about an hour because I've got a two o'clock at town hall. Okay, it's just one site, I think. We can. Yep. Are you available, Mike? Yeah, I can make two. Okay. Seven. Really like to get a hold of Carl too. So you're gonna be there Tuesday at twelve? Yep. Um, Tuesday. Do I hear a motion to continue? Make a motion to continue. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you very much, and thank, thank you for you. Yeah. Thanks. speaking. Uh, next uh, <coughs> item on the agenda is at 740 notice of intent 270. Uh, I don't believe we have a number. Chuck from Mallet. Concession area map. I, 26. Yeah, I didn't see one. Lots 50, 51, 52 Reading Trails Committee. The money came in later. Um, in the hall. Is this a, is this a first time we've heard the notice of intent? Yeah. I'm going to go and get them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is this a hearing um, is now open and being conducted concurrently under the authority of the Mass Wetlands Protection Act, Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended in the Reading General Bylaws, Section 7.1. Hearings conducted in the following manner. Applicant presents proposal. Commissioner will receive reports from the administrator. Commissioner will address questions and comments to the applicant, and the public will then be given the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant. And that should be directed to the chair. And when you do that, please give your name and address before your comments and or questions are presented. Anybody wishing to speak, there's a um, sign-in sheet in the uh, corner. And uh, Kim, are you? I am. Making the presentation. Ready for me? Yes. Uh, I'm over here and I work on social network. I'm Kim Honichlager. I'm the staff person. I apologize for sitting down here. Um, I'm the staff person who works with the, uh, the Trails Committee. And we're before you, as you know, with this notice of intent. And we are proposing that this activity is eligible be, to be treated as a limited project under 310 CMR 10.536, which allows uh, footpaths to be treated as a limited project. And I apologize for that. Let me zoom in here. So, <clears throat> a little over a, a year ago, the Trails Committee applied for a grant um, for the State Department of Conservation and Recreation, a uh, trails grant to build a trail someplace in, in town. And we talked with Chuck, talked to the Trails Committee, and decided to apply f to build a trail through the Millette Conservation Area, primarily because it's right in the center of town. As you know, most of the trails in town are in the northern part. And we chose this project because we zoomed in far enough. Yeah. Um, so just to orient you, this is Lowell Street at the inter intersection of Grove and Willow Streets. The green here is the Millet Conservation Area. There's a little existing trail across here that connects Lowell and Willow, and I'll show you a better map in a sec. And the orange section here is the proposed trail. 
which would connect from Hunt Street through to this new one. Um, what's attractive about this location is, as I said, it's the center of town. It's midway between the whole Birch Meadow Complex, the Austin Prep School, Parker Middle School is down here. It's within striking distance of commuter rail and the public library. It's a small trail network, if you will, but um, once built, it's, we hope, be a real, um, it'll give access to neighbors in the, in the entire uh, neighborhood, really connecting three different neighbor, uh, neighborhoods. Um, so we're pretty excited about that. Check that one. Um, so this is a, a better map of, of the project. So this is the Millette Conservation Area. Here is the <coughs> existing trail that was worked on um, last month. Um, Chuck was there, Nika was there for a while. We had some abutters helped us on this project. Uh, some people who live, live a little farther in the broader neighborhood. We had a couple kids from uh, Austin Prep and it, it was a really nice little project, basically renovating this trail from Lowell Street through the Willow Street with a spur out to the average Jonah River. So the proposed project will be to complete the orange part here, so from the end of Hunt Street uh, to, Aber to the Aberjona. Um, it's made up of a, a, a handful of tasks, so if we start at the Hunt Street end, uh, DPW will, will install a kiosk or message board, which will be used to keep the neighborhood informed, but also to put um, some information on the Aberjona River. This is the headwaters of the Mystic River, so there'll be general public information there. We'll clear about 300 feet of trail, build a 90-foot long bog <coughs> bridge, which is basically a, a boardwalk really low off the ground, made out of um, four by fours perpendicular to the trail, and then four by four stringers with decking on top. And I can I can show you some plans of that if it's helpful. Clear a little more trail, take out some old bicycles <coughs> that were stashed by kids that have been there long enough that there's a tree, uh, the tree which was maybe six feet six inches in diameter, growing right up through the. Uh, uh, through one of the bicycles, this is one of the parts of the project we'd like to have um, a youth group of some sort help us on. <coughs> we'll clear a little more trail, then there's a 10-foot lo long bridge. Um, I should let me back up just a little bit. The trail follows a sewer easement across the Millette Conservation Area. So it's on the, the, the conservation area for the most part is pretty low and pretty wet, but there's a slightly raised berm running from Hunt Street across the river until you hit the upland behind Willow Street, and the trail will follow that berm. It's discontinuous here, so with a 10-foot bridge will jump from where the, across a ditch that, that cuts the berm. Um, a little more upland trail will have to be cleared, and then there's a 40-foot boardwalk. You just bar barely will touch down an, up, an upland again, and then there's a 24-foot bridge, and at that point we will connect to the existing. Um, trail. So it's about a 650 foot trail project uh, and it, it's almost 200 feet of, of structures between the bog bridge, the bridges, and the ramps to go back to ground. The structures um, under the grant have to be ADA accessible, which means you know the ramps have to be a real, can't be steep, there has to be railing on the bridge, etc. Um, the bog bridge, the Bridges, the boardwalk are all structures that the Trails Committee have built before. So most of this is, is pretty familiar work to the crew. There's a couple things that are new which I can talk about in a little bit. Um, so we've experienced volunteers. Um, we've built most of these types of structures before. We've had two other grants about this, this size in the past to build boardwalk in Bear Meadow and to build another, replace a boardwalk in Kirchian and Woods. Um, to protect the wetlands, we will do most of the cutting of materials off-site. We'll do as much prefab as we can off-site. It's a heck of a lot easier, but also um, it keeps any sawdust we cre create you know, off-site. If we have to do any cutting um, along the project itself, we'll put tarps down to collect the sawdust. And when we do a project like a bog bridge, we typically put um, what we call walk boards along the side. So we'll just lay down some planks along the side of the structure we're walking on. So as we're building it, we're walking back and forth across those planks so that the wetland plants um, recover more quickly. Um, let's see what else we've got here. We'll use the, um, the kiosk at the Hunt Street end as well as the other two trailheads to post notices when we're going to be working. Um, we'll send uh, courtesy letters to the abutters prior to each workday. 
trail grant is good through the end of calendar year 2020. So um, if this is approved, you can expect summer this early summer, but maybe maybe off site. Um, we we'll work. We try to work in the fall and then again in the spring because it's miserable out in the middle of the marsh building hot when you're hot and sweaty and trying to build something in July. Um, and uh, so we have to finish up by the end of calendar year 2020. But the neighbors will see us you know, six or eight small projects. So uh, a Saturday workday, for example, rather than one sustained effort. Um, we use hand tools, cordless drills, loppers, bow saws. Um, we have a portable generator. It's possible if we had to do any significant cutting of uh, materials closer to where we're building, we could bring the generator into the end of Hunt Street or um, maybe off Willow Street. There's a pretty good work area. Uh, here off Willow Street. Um, let's the town engineer has approved the uh, the plan for the bridge. Um, we plan to keep Chuck more involved than in previous projects, uh, and he's proved really helpful in the trail that we built in April uh, in prefabbing uh, a couple weekends ago, both because of his construction skills and. Um, you know, if there's an issue in the field, we can ask him right there, is it okay to do this? And it really gave us a comfort level in the field. Um, so uh, we're expecting to work closely with him on that. Um, I'd like to show you a couple photos. I can show you a couple plans, or I can pause here and, and take your questions. What's your, your preference? I've got a few questions for you. How long did it take you to do the, um, the, the, the uh, Willow to Lowell Street? Piece. Um, so let me tell you what we did first. We spread wood chips at this end, uh, clipped you know, to establish the trail and blaze the trail all the way through. And then this is a 50 foot bog bridge. So compared this one to the 90 foot bog bridge. So to do that whole project, uh, we cleared and blazed this part of the trail too. Um, it was 84 hours of volunteer work. We had 14 volunteers was done on a Saturday with a little bit of cleanup work the next day. We came back to finish putting in screws in the decking, basically. So, Becky, one thing, um, you, you might understand this already, but I just want to make it clear that that was an existing trail and that was only maintenance for everything that was, so that was, they didn't create that amount of trail in one day. Okay. Yeah. That's, so, that's a big difference. So you've got four um, back crossings, and I assume those are those, that'll be kind of significant compared to the, the other trail. When did you say you wanted to do that? I know you're going to do it in, in stages, well, right? Right. We had hoped to get into the field this spring or early summer, um, and we've, we've just been backed up. So we're, de we're already behind the schedule we'd like to keep. Why wouldn't you try to do this in the winter when the ground is frozen and you'd have less disturbance? And it might be easier to walk out there. I think we'll consider anything. The problem, as I see it, is if the ground is frozen, our footings aren't going to be there. Okay. We won't know how the final product is going to lay and, and whether it's level or not. Um, you know, we can do. We can certainly do the prefab offsite. That's one of the big challenges. Is not using up our volunteers. It's a lot of heavy lifting in every sense of the word. Has so, sawdust been deep hazardous waste or something? Pardon? Has no, sawdust no, been deep They don't use arsenic waste? anymore in uh, fresh treated wood. No? Right. You don't use arsenic anymore. Well, that's why I was wondering why the concern for if you have oh. to cut stuff in the field. Don't worry about it. I was just a fit. I'm not going to hurt anything. Um, with considering the amount of boardwalk that's going to be cut up, it's wood. It's also so easier for us. Compost piles. You know, this, uh, the Trails Committee, I work with them on that uh, first half there. Uh, they're a well-polished machine. <laughs> true. So they brought in the boards. Everyone knew their job. They actually knew several tasks, each one of them. The boards were already cut to size. They had all the materials separated and the right amount of saws and uh, you know drills and whatnot. And there wasn't a lot of standing around. Everyone worked individually. So I, you know, for that, 
I, I think that they've probably encountered many of these situations in a smaller uh, square footage you know, or linear feet, but um, working next to the wetland, working, building a bog bridge, knowing how to um, either if they bring it in in one full section or in pieces, it's, it's going to be prefabbed in a way to cause the least amount of you know, chaos and harm to the wetland. Uh, as, as far as uh, the sawdust, rest assured, there's going to be some that gets off the tarp. Just can't, can't happen without that. But, uh, you know, it's important to try to make everyone feel that you're doing your best to work within the limits of the project and, and putting down those safeguards makes a lot of sense for someone who might just happen by. We're also cutting uh, the tracks type decking, and that's not supposed to be out in the wetland, so we prefer to sweep that up and keep it off site. Mm. Jim, when, when we were out there, we couldn't get across the, the 24 foot bridge. Yep. And the last task, this, the, this, the 40 foot boardwalk walk over the backwater. I think we had talked about this a little bit before. First time, right? You guys have been out and kind of decide. I mean, may I show you some photos? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Th th these are um, what you see in your um, in the notice of intent. No. Swamp water. Um, that's the mighty Aberjona, which is actually not technically a river. The Rivers Protection Act does not apply to this project because the river is not considered a perennial stream until about a quarter mile downstream based on an engineering design uh, study. I don't remember the year. We did, a, we did a study in the engineering department and they called the West Street West Street and what was the other street? Willow? Willow. Yeah. Um, that's the start of the Abajona mm -hmm. River. And we have used that on a few projects. The one at 113 Arcadia was one of them where we called that river where the applicant and his consultant wanted it to become a river in Woomer. So um, so this is a location we're on we're looking towards Willow Street um, years years run, run uh, year sorry runs year round and has a watershed more than a half square mile so it's mostly the watershed so if that was dry for more than five days uh, consecutively and someone could prove it, then it wouldn't, well, it's not a river now, but it would be, how do you turn it into a river? You just either have to do an engineering study, which we've already done in this area, or uh, look at the watershed again. Is that, that's never dry in there, is it? This is the average on it. Yeah, right. So that, that particular center of water is never dry. No. I mean, that, that, that riverbed is always water probably that's a big holding area right there so that's just kind of where uh, you know a channelized flow has happened within the center of a wetland um, that flows from like the other side of the high school under the playing field all the way past under that's PNS yeah. down through there oh, underneath yeah. the tracks and then it splits in one side goes up around Austin prep and the other side goes down uh, Arcadia Ave. Um, so this photo was taken after about two inches of rain. So the, the Trails Committee has been out there, individuals or the whole committee, um, eight or ten times now over the last say, year and a half, trying to catch this thing flooding, trying to really see what the worst case is for how high the, the water might go. This is um, firm banks here where we're going to, where we're proposing the bridge. But upstream and down, and the, the river's flowing from Lowell Street on the right to the left is... Um, uh, the railroad track um, that and Willow Street yeah so this there's firm banks here but elsewhere the banks are completely cut up um, and the the dike or berm that the trail will follow is also discontinuous which is why we need to build a bog bridge and the and the boardwalks so what we believe is happening is that the water as it comes into the to the Millette conservation area is simply spreading out Oh, you see firm banks here, so it's a great place for a bridge, but the water isn't staying in that channel in flooding conditions. It's just plain spreading out. And actually, uh, whoa, we got, let me close a couple of these so I can see what we got. Um, that one? 
there we go. So uh, up here, um, there's a, a culvert under New Crossing Road. I mean, under Intervale Terrace, I'm sorry, and another culvert <coughs> under Wall Street. Um, that is constrict the water coming into the into the millet. So they, they sort of meter how much water comes in. It definitely backs up in this area and floods behind the PNS variety. Um, the river flows out, or the, the un river flows out under the um, through a culvert under the railroad track down here. And that culvert's only uh, 20 inches by like 43 inches, so it's a very narrow granite line culvert underneath the railroad track. So the constriction can happen there. So anything downstream that restricts the water will back it up. And luckily, we have this wetland here. Uh, the lead as a whole is about 18 acres, and I don't know the acres of the wetlands, but it's probably 16 acres of wetlands. It's so it's it's a big, wide marsh with very little elevation um, change. Let me show you. This is the river looking back the other direction. So we're again. This is where the bridge would cross. We're looking towards Hunt Street this time. Um, the trail will go off this direction and hit that 40-foot board, proposed 40-foot boardwalk above where my, the little hand icon is there. Um, this tree is right where the bridge, uh, the bridge crossing on the, on the average zone. And what you see here is a little bit of staining from flooding. Um, this is the top of the bank here. And you know, we've seen water in about that level, not higher. In, in the various site visits. The photo on the right is the uh, culvert under uh, Interville Terrace. That's looking upstream. Uh, let's see what else we have here. The photo on the left is the trail as it leaves Hunt Street. Uh, wintertime it looks fairly clear. Now there's a lot of leaves that have either washed down Hunt Street or, or, or been dumped. <coughs> so it's a bit of a mess down right there right now. Um, photo on the right is, is where when you hit the 90-foot bog bridge. So we're going from Hunt Street now towards Willow Street. You can see it starts getting wet. There's saplings in there, and further on, there's some Phragmites that we'll have to go through. On the left is the berm after the 90-foot bog, bog, um, bog bridge, and you can see that there's some pretty nice upland there. There's already a bit of a trail. Um, kids and game, I suppose. And uh, this is looking towards the, the stash of bicycles is in this area. We're between the 90-foot bog bridge and the 10-foot, proposed 10-foot bridge here. And on the right is the paved access road off Willow Street near the railroad track that goes down into a meadow that a neighbor maintains. And that's where we launched the uh, project we did from Lowell to Willow Street. And that's where, um, for building the bridge across the Aberjona, we would stage it in this area. And the other project probably start at Hunt Street. Um, the area on the left is the, the photo on the left is the location for the 10 foot bridge. And yeah, we were out, and this is as far as we got. I was out there with um, um, Becky and Nika um, for the site visit, and this is as far as we got. We would have gotten pretty wet if we tried to jump across there. And then on the right, is where the 40-foot boardwalk will go. It essentially goes from the two red jackets, from this guy to this guy. And then uh, this is Will out there in the woods, and he's almost at the Aberjona River. It's that close. It's, it's pretty close in there. And uh, this dike, uh, it's, it's pretty nice little upland, narrow um, path on that side. Um, let's see if I have anything else that's useful. So, two part of it. So I was told, said that the, the trail structures we've built before. Um, what we're hoping to do for the 40-foot boardwalk is use these swamp pads. They're 18-foot square, galvanized metal footers, really for four four by four posts. And the photo on the right is a project in North Andover that used these. Uh, until we get out there, it's and start probing the wetlands. And this is what we hope to use to spread the weight so that we don't have to be pounding four by four posts way in or, or coming up with some other way to, to span um, that 40 feet. And then on the left here is one of our boardwalk sections um, <coughs> that was prefabbed off site and brought in. This is uh, actually in Kirchian Woods. Uh, so that rectangle there is, is what we can do off site and then carry them in. This 
project was the border was only three feet wide. Ours, this one will be four feet wide, so it'll be a little bigger than that. And on the right is just a, the type of support we use on ramps and lower board locks. That's a, an ADS pipe uh, and uh, you know, holding up a typical structure. That one is in a Higgins Conservation Area, I bet, I, I believe. Um, this is the, the plan for the, um, the bridge across the Arbor Jonah. This is the other piece that's new to us. The um, in cross section here, the average one is 16 feet wide, firm banks. We'll do probably eight by eight sills laid on the surface, and then these are um, 24 foot long glue laminated you know, structural timbers. I don't, I don't know how else to say it. LVOs. Thank you. Um, and we haven't used those before, but the resulting. Pro bridge is going to be bigger but not all that different typically we build with two by eights and our longest structure is like 10 feet with multiple sections um, if we look at it from the top you've got the the glue lambs on the outside forming the outside of the bridge it's four feet wide and then on the inside here you've got two by eight headers and and uh, joists stiffening the bridge adding strength and acting as nailers for the decking the composite decking and some design. This is the plan that the town engineer has seen and has approved. It's really ingenious. Um, somebody suggested uh, glue lamps to us out there on site. I wonder who that was. Um, and and the glue lamps were sized by um, Koopman Lumber. They have a, a, a store up in Andover, and it was there. I think it's a Sudbury engineering division that, that helped me with sizing the beams. And, uh, in cross section, there's the glue lambs, one there, one there, stiffened with the two by eight header, four by four posts forming the railing posts, and then um, the railings will look like this two by six rails backed by uh, vinyl coated wire mesh. This is a Forest Service design, and I, I think we'll. Yeah, we, we could do it other ways. We've done other types of railings, but the nice thing about this is that it um, wouldn't shade the water too much and hopefully wouldn't be quite as obtrusive as this is an example of using a, sorry, um, two by two balusters, you know, pressure treated uh, balusters. Uh, so we, we kind of like the idea, and I, I actually have to do a budget amendment to uh, be able to afford that, but I, I think we'll pull, be able to pull it off. Um, that's maybe it. That side view of the bog bridge, that's four by four sleepers and then 10 foot long four by four stringers on top of that and then decking on top of that. That's what we did out in the, at the trail that we did a um, month. Um, I think that's all I want to show you in terms of photos and plans. What? Plan and answer questions. Oh. Okay. Uh, so, um, any questions at yeah, this point? Please. So, the the only question I have is is what is the chance that, I mean, the crossing doesn't seem like uh, it seems like. What are the chances that any of these locations move, and, and how far could it possibly move? You know, uh, I think uh, is this set at this point, or you guys are still looking at how, what, and where it gets wet. Um, is there a chance that the 90 foot boardwalk or the sorry the the 40 foot boardwalk gets moved uh, I thought that's what was mentioned to us when we were out there so I mm, we looked at it in the winter time and so I've, I'm hesitant to say it's cast in stone we're pretty comfortable with it but let's see if I can do this um, and, and I don't see it as a big deal I, I'm just so this we could bull our way, we could, so that we jump from one berm here to another berm over here. It looks like we could bull our way straight through here. It's a longer distance. There's a little bit more vegetative matter, so if we really couldn't figure out how to put those footers in standing water, I think we could go through here. Um, I, at that point, I would certainly defer to Chuck and probably come back before you. Um, and I guess that's why I asked the question. I think, you know, I, I, Chuck 
machines, right? You guys seem to be a well-oiled machine. You guys know what you're doing out there. You keep it clean. I, I guess I'm not opposed to keeping that mindset open of, like, if you find a new a, a route as you get out there that mm -hmm. seems to work, engage, truck have the conversation, but I'm, I'm not... Uh, I'm not that worried about if okay. it deviates okay. a little bit from. We'd, we'd like to do the 24 foot bridge first because we want to get out there because it's attractive and you want to get out there and then we can see where we're going yeah. before we come around and start working back through, um, from Hunt Street. Uh, that's the plan. Kimmy staging, <clears throat> I think some of it is uh, um, on, on the, the piece from Willow to Lowell. What would be staged there, the 24-foot bridge and the 40-foot boardwalk? Definitely the 24-foot bridge. So we're talking about this area, too. You can actually, uh, DPW drove a lot of the materials, the cut 4 by 4s and the decking in for us when we were doing this work here, and it was mm -hmm. a huge help. Um, so that would be the idea, again, if we can get DPW's help to have them drop materials here, and then we carry the materials for the 24-foot bridge in. Um, the boardwalk and the 10-foot bridge definitely would stage from this side. There, this is a right-of-way at the end of, of Hunt Street, and it's um, there's not much undergrowth. There's, it's not exactly level, but there's plenty of room to find a place to um, just drop materials for the day. The 40-foot boardwalk, I'm not actually sure which would be the easiest. If we build these structures, then it's going to be a straight shot. I guess a, a little... I know that I, it was nice to get out there because I forgot that that whole thing was was paved. It's a little yeah. dicey getting this, by that tree. Right <laughs> yeah, but um, that seems to be a great staging area and and have a lot of room. What about the Hunt Street? There, there's not a lot of parking and it's pretty tight. A, a community there. Um, are you? Have you thought about that? Yeah. Um, so we were before you last September, or maybe, actually, I don't know, my, but we've been before you many times. Maybe it was last February. At some point, though, we invited neighbors in, and we heard from some of the neighbors on Hunt Street, and they did warn us, and they were concerned about parking on Hunt Street. So what I, we'd, I'd like to do is have people, have volunteers park on Vine Street, mm -hmm. with the exception of those who have a pickup truck full of, uh, you know, tools, the garden carts we use to carry things into the site, for example. And then we could even move those vehicles. It's, I'd say there's room to park, but there's no room to turn around without using people's um, driveways. Uh, so, yeah, that would argue for uh, doing the 40-foot boardwalk from the Willow Street end, too. I think that makes a lot of sense. I just have one other question. You guys have a lot of work ahead of you. Um, uh, Jen, <laughs> And I hate to add something to that, but you mentioned it at the end of Hunt Street. This has been, and this is not the first time we've seen this. This is a, a common area that we see yard debris. Is, is there any chance that while you guys, while you guys are out there getting things prepped and cleaned up, that we could get some of that out and get it to the compost? Instead, clear that area out. I think the, the cleaner it looks, the less people, are, the less likely people are to dump in that area. So is that what you'd ask, that if, if we clean that up, we just take this up right to the compost? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, d it, we're hoping to, we've, we've reached out to Austin Prep, and we tried to get a project with them late this school, this school year, and you know, we, we, it didn't work out. But we're still hoping. Um, if we can get, a, in other words, no, if we can get a, big, a bunch of volunteers, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, for any building project, we need a handful of skilled volunteers, a few people that are good learners, and then if we're lucky, we have people that we can put on things like like taking out the leaves. Um, it was frozen when we went out there and did most of the planning, so we haven't addressed it. If if it's something that you know, if it's something that I can't have it, I, I just. I know you have a lot, of, a lot there. I just don't think you can consider it. You know, I think it's going to make yeah. the area look nicer. Yeah. I think it's going to okay. discourage more people going back there. Mm -hmm. so, uh, it's on the town land, or is that on Boston Gas land? Um, so the the right, of, the Hunt Street right away continues until it hits uh, Millet property, and we have to make sure that where we leave the right away, we're on town land, Conservation Commission controlled land and not on the Boston Gas property. So I think what we would do is have the surveyor out there before we start work, because we want DPW to put a kiosk out there. We want it to be on town land. 
and it would be in the right of way, not you know past the paved area, but in the in the legal right of way. Do you know where the dumping is? Is it on the Boston Gas Land, or is it the right of way, or is it on the conservation? I would say both. The property line appears to be in the center line of the where the right of way ends. No, actually, I take it back. It's pretty close to the end of the paved area, so I'm guessing it's in the, the town right away. There's also um, Japanese knotweed back there and Phragmites, and we have no plans to clean that up. We are out of good ideas. Do you know what I know? <laughs> I have a question. Maybe, um, maybe it's just a pro forma question, but uh, is, uh, are all these wood structures that you're building in here well above the 100 year floodplain? And if not, uh, are they cable anchored so that if you do have a 100 year flood, that they don't end up down there to railroad tracks? Um, Starting route to 107 Main Street. You know, I have not checked recently, but I'm almost positive this is not within the 100 year flood zone. Um, and the complication we have is that there's a sewer line. We're co, you know, we're we're going down the sewer uh, right away, and we've had um, a town <coughs> surveyor out there to put stakes up and flag it in the field, and we will do that again before we go out. Um, what we've suggested we'll do um, is is put in uh, rebar uh, drift pins, basically. Um, so the. Did that answer your question? I mean, that's what we're hoping just, to do. I just was wondering if, if anyone took an elevation reading as to you putting in a, a bridge, a 24-foot bridge across the Abajona, and, and like you said, the in behind PNS, you know, that sometimes is a lake over there. Right. If where that 24-foot bridge is turns into a lake, now that bridge is going to end up going downstream. Right. So we. Um, as planned, will be about six, 14 to 16 inches above the water level. Um, so to get enough volume at that height that it's going to hit the bridge and move it, we're going to have to spread out and pretty much flood over the top of the, um, the sewer berm and the entire Millette um, conservation area. It's definitely a concern. It's why we've been out there so long, often. Um, if we could carry sills or footers big enough, we could make it higher, and then you end up with an ADA-compliant ramp that's like 30 feet long. Right. Uh, so then in the middle of this really pretty area, we've got this massive structure, so that's the balance. I just didn't know what, what the, is an elevation to what the 100-year floodplain would be there, 100-year flood episode would be in that area. There we go. So. So you're looking at the screen, and an orange is the 500-year, 2%, 500-year uh, 500 flood, and the blue would be flood zone, 100-year, jurisdictional. There's none. Typically, there isn't any in swampy areas because the swamp spreads out the water. So I would say below top of bank, probably. You know, I, so I think that observations in the field match up with what we're looking at here from this um, data point, and that there's no flood zone out there, there's no stained trees or anything like that, or any signs of it coming above the bank. So I think. Yeah, I think I think that might have to be revisited if the town decides to modify the upstream restrictive culvert under 129. You know, because there's an inlet control. That small culvert. Is it by design or by design? Yeah. Is what it is. Yeah, it's it's just, it's I don't know who intended it to be that size or why, but. Even if it wasn't, if, if it was, if these wooden structures were cable stayed and anchored, there's not a tremendous flow rate that would be going right. through there anyway. So if it flooded, it would just raise it up to the extent of the cable stay, and then it would just sink back down. But if it wasn't cable stayed, it would float away. Um, so I'm not familiar with what you mean by cable stayed and anchored. Um, so Basically I just big iron bars that are driven into the ground, and then you put uh, uh, cable ties with cables that would go around the iron pipes and then around the wood structures with eye bolts. Like a giant screw going into yeah. the ground. Okay, yeah. so the surface there is rubble left over from when they put the sewer in, but I would think 
How do you get them into the ground? Do you have to use a, a pneumatic hammer or something? Well, big guy with a big giant sledgehammer. You're hired. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I like... drive them in at a 30 degree angle to the ground. So, and before we build any of the structures, we're going to have the surveyor back out there. At where the bridge crosses, it's pretty clear where the sewer line is, and it's a little downstream of us. So I'm really cautious about putting anything into the ground. But I think we could do that there. Yeah, I think, I think that's a good idea. Because I'd really hate to see it float on downstream. Yeah. Any other questions from the commission members? And you could write with a story about a great flood. Any other com there. members have any questions? Hearing not, any comments or questions from the community? You, sir, first. Your name and... My name is Jeffrey Hollis. I live on Bond Street. If you could blow that map up a bit, I want to. I have a concern, and I just want to give you a little background to it. Okay, this thing. Too much? Right there. Does that work? No, that's my house right there. Okay, 15, 20 years ago, I went to build a deck on it. And because I live in, I think, what is known as the buffer zone, if I'm using the correct word, I had to come before the Conservation Commission. And I did, and I presented my plans. And I was told that the only way they would... Could you please not fool with that anymore? I'm going to get it to where I want it, then you can start okay. talking. It takes a minute. I'm not that good at this. That shows the wetland. It'll help you out. Yeah, okay. But, all right, that... No, no right it's there. a little, it's a little touchy. I there want you go. this for a reason. The only way I could get it approved was that the deck had to meet a certain setback, I think, from the boundary of the wetland. I forgot what the measurement was. The result is I probably have one of the few trapezoidal decks in Reading. Um, I was not happy when I was told that, and I argued. I said, you know, what's, this is 10 feet off the ground. What's the impact? Um, is there any way I could mitigate that? I was told no. There was no way I could mitigate that. This little wedge off of there is maybe 30 square feet. Okay, couldn't do it. So obviously, I want to do it. I built the, um, I built the deck. Now, what we're talking about here, if my rough math is correct, oh. And the language that was used at that point in time were phrases like, it would cause, it would cause long-term, irreversible damage to the wetland if it were extended beyond the um, set-off and possibly upset the flora and fauna. I remember those phrases distinctly. <coughs> now we're talking about putting in approximately 560 square feet of planking on the wetland, <coughs> not in the buffer zone. And I haven't heard anything about permanent and irreputable damage. What's the standard? Uh, so pedestrian pathways are allowed under the Wetlands Protection Act under 10.3 CMR uh, 5.3.6. I'm sorry, I have a hearing impediment. I'm sorry. There's, um, there's a standard that allows what the Trails Committee is doing. So they made exception for that. And I cited it by saying C 310 CMR, uh, sorry, 310 10, CMR 536. 10.536. Yeah, 536. So a Trails Committee can do things that a homeowner Well, that's an argument with the state because those are state regulations. Okay. This is sort of the answer I thought I'd get. Thank you. Sir, your name? Excuse me? Oh, I'm sorry. That's <laughs> okay. Hi, Kyle Torland, uh, 43 Vine Street. We live right up at the top of the front. We have the uh, pleasure of walking our big dog through this trail through the winter. I saw you the other day. <laughs> and, um, and most recently now the, the new walkway. So we're very much in support of this. There's some points I wanted to bring to the board's attention. Yes. Um, one, that there's a significant amount of water runoff down Hunt, that as you go there now, you can see the dirt is uh, been washed away. The rocks are more and more exposed. Even the sewer manhole is now, the rim is all visible because there's 
something happened recently that removed something that was controlling the water. Um, this is right at the head of the trail. So I think that that needs to be addressed as you develop your designs for this, is how all of that street water is running down to the path. Uh, if something is handled there, you're going to have a lot of twisted angles. Um, for one, there's also, as you noted, there's a lot of the Japanese mock meat. I don't know if, if there's an intent that while um, it's right at the head of the trail, it's, it's this open area there, and I'm concerned that as you bring in the trail, you're going to open up more land that the knotweed can get roots into. Uh, and there's also managing the knotweed that is there now. So there's a lot of skunk uh, weed, which is all natural, <clears throat> which I think the roots of which kind of cuts off the knotweed, but uh, I'm concerned about the width of the trail, which is the next question here. I heard you saying a four foot wide uh, deck. I'd like to see that to be narrower if possible. I understand the bridge might have to be as wide as it can be, but I'm also curious how much land you need to clear to put in that width of a uh, walkway for the bogs. Uh, the narrower the better, the less invasive this is to the natural environment. Um, I don't think this is a trail that's going to see a lot of people. It will definitely be used, There's truly. Uh, often, but <clears throat> I think we can live with encroachment of the existing trees um, and maybe it's just minor maintenance instead of trying to clear a very wide path because the one along Willow that connects Willow to Wall Street is a very wide path. I hope we're not seeing anything as wide as that in the swamp. There is an incredible amount of wildlife that lives here. Fisher cat, if you want to hear one, come by sometime. Uh, we got a coyote, and I walked down at the end of the day, and there was four deer that ran off. So there's lots of wildlife back here. They use this trail. Clearly, it's been used. You can see the stack that's there. I'm concerned a little bit about disrupting their habitat. Um, or the fact that they can then use the bridge, which is great. Um, in regard to the trees, I'm curious to know what the caliber size that if a tree is in the way of said bark, uh, what's the restriction on the size that can be removed? I want to make sure that the growth that has been able to grab a foothold there is not removed. And that we should bear that in mind and remove as few any large caliber trees as possible. Uh, one other further, well, two other points on uh, the construction materials. Uh, any PT wood wouldn't last very long, pressure treated wood would not last very long. Uh, some of the different woods that you're referring to are epoxy glued together wood, they would last better. And obviously the deck as you've used along the connector on the back side is Trex, which is a composite material with plastic. Clearly should not be cut on site, you don't want the plastics in the waterway. Um, but anything that Construction materials should be something that is considering 25 or longer years of use, otherwise it will dilapidate. And I agree that the bridge should not have a picket style baluster with pressure treated. That would last you eight years. But anything to consider the longevity, because we don't want to build something here that is not maintained and falls apart and is a wreck in 10 or less years. Um, one other aspect then, close here, is winter use. Uh, it's important to note that the snow plows that come down, push the snow, and they're lucky to get back up and out. They, as you noted, even during construction, there's no turnaround for them to go back up ahead. They push all that snow, and it sits there until spring. Um, it causes some water runoff issues, and that's probably also what's undermining that. But if you're going to put a trail sign, you have to consider or how the head of the trail starts and any water mitigation issues are established. You do have to be aware of how the snow is handled, how it's pushed and piled up. Uh, and last bit would be winter use again. Is there any maintenance? Is there any access? Is, or is it just you know, use at your own risk, which is fine by me as well, but I'm not expecting people to be out there shoveling anything. What's your thoughts? Thank you. Great comments. <laughs> Who wants to answer all of those? Well, I don't want to say it'd be all answered as much as make it's notes.
Yeah, yeah, I think that I, I think those are great considerations. Um, well, one of the things, the first thing, uh, I I actually do recall seeing the same thing off of Hunt Street that you but can the see the erosion, the erosion occurring, and, and that's it pretty. A, I mean, it's pretty steep. Oh yeah, I yeah. mean uh, the the, the, the you know, roadway the steep. There's that's so it's that's where it all drains to, um, and, and it fans up before even getting even remotely close to the wetland. So it, it's, no, it doesn't fan out. It goes in pretty deep, and it then spools off to the left. It's finding it's finding some nice. It's making its own nice channels there. Mm. Um, so it, it is right now a little bit of a mess. I don't know. I'd have to see it again, but but it is something that probably should be considered and looked at. And I, I also thought we were point with the, the kiosk and the plowing. <laughs> oh. So DPW has um, offered to put the kiosk in, and we'll, I'll ask them to get out there and survey it, and then um, ask them to meet us out there on site, maybe with conservation too. I don't know what you do about the runoff. Trails committee can't deal with it, but you're right. We we climbed over the the big pile of snow. Um, that kiosk is going to have to be pushed back, and you know it's not part of our mission to be picking up leaves and uh, taking out invasives. But if we can work it into the project, we definitely will. We want it to work. We don't want that kiosk to be dumped, you know, knocked over by the first uh, snowplow that comes through. Um, he did bring up a point about the width of the trail, but it, am I understanding that that's that's a ADH, um, is well, it ADH? Go ahead. Sure. So that was the gentleman, I forgot your name, sorry. Sorry, it's Kyle. Kyle asked to build this in a form that would last 25 years. So I asked the Trails Committee and saw this at Kirchian Woods to look at wider trails or wider boardwalks because I think in 25 years, um, we have to think about ADA access for all these places. And the trail might be slimmer, but the boardwalk should be four feet so we don't have to dig them, uh, build them again. So well, my that's, that's the reason why we're doing the four foot wide boardwalks. And there's a lot of, wait, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. No, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> there's a lot of places in town, Pinevale is one of them, where uh, you know, we want to try to make it easy to get in not really ADA, but easy to get in, so everyone in town can use these areas, and and so that's our hope. Not just the mountain bikers, not just uh, young um, people, but anyone who wants to enjoy a nice walk on a trail that um, I don't know is not intimidating. Just to add in, I think Kim, you said this, but because this is a grant, I think you need to meet that requirement for anything that you're building, correct? The structures, yes. The trail service, no. We okay. could get away with 36 so inches of width, Got it. but the bog bridges and boardwalks will we'll put, put bumpers on them, mm -hmm. which will narrow us up a little bit more. Um, so 48, up 48 inches, you know, four feet wide has, has been the standard we've used. Um, we would rather not clear the trail to 48 inches because it's it's kind of neat the way it winds through the trees. But yeah. uh, and I guess we'll defer to the conservation commission with the caliper of the trees we'd take out. Um, we hope to just be able to take out things that are around maybe two inches in, in diameter and, then and um, wind around the rest. Um, you know, we, we needs a little forbearance so that the bog bridge can be relatively straight, <laughs> not going like this, because 10 foot 4 by 4s don't bend very well. But that, the bog bridge is actually through mostly Phragmites, there's um, not many saplings in there. And I remember the Abijona crossing, like you said, Mike, not taking out those trees that are on the bend, it would undermine on that side, but I thought you were going to uh, avoid that water-stained tree on the other side. And, and that's why... Um, Chuck suggested we go to the, the glue laminated timbers because we can get a wider crossing. We can set those um, footings back further from the bank so we don't have to be cutting anything. Yeah. So, yeah. so they the are bearing in that in mind, you know, the cutting. At, at the bridge itself, yes. But I also wonder, as much as the boardwalk or the bridge, I mean, I understand the bridge is going to be wide and you've got an open <coughs> river and it should be as wide as, as it needs to be there, clearly. Uh, it's more of the wetland bog bridge. Um, and if you're putting in a four foot, maybe you can get it down to 42 inches. I think that might still be an ADA. It's also how wide beyond that that you need to go. 
So in order to put a four foot on, you're cutting a six foot or an eight foot trail. Um, That's the question. Yeah, yeah. We don't. I don't anticipate that. Um, Why is it going to be? Probably not going to be a two foot trail. Well, I think I thought you just said it's going to be four foot or less, right? The, the trail piece. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. The bridge has to be four feet. No, no, no I, I think. But the, but the tra well, and I know what you mean on the section from Lowell to yeah, Willow Street. Yeah, some of the volunteers had walking. a little too much fun clearing right the trail, and right. some of it's quite wide. But right. there was also very little undergrowth there. Yeah, um, it's a very different condition than it is. Yeah. This is like rude swampland there compared to the right. other trail. And, and maybe right. just as the intent is not to to create something as wide as, I know this is paved now, but as wide as, and I think this is what you're speaking to, the, the entrance here and the, the entrance down there. Right. Yeah, Good. okay. Well, the intent is to keep it relatively either the similar width or possibly narrower than what each one of those bridges are. Oh, d d yeah. Okay. Wouldn't be any wider than that, than the four feet. Huh. I think we talked about this last time. There's gonna be no parking at the bottom of Hunt Street, right? Uh, there isn't is there really a rule for people to park their cars there, is that correct? Um, it's not a part of our, we don't have say in that. That would be the board of select, the select board if anyone wanted to provide parking there. Um, no, I think we, as, as somebody suggested, I expect it mostly to be neighborhood work, use people walking to the site. Um, We'll have volunteers park on Vine, but it's not great for um, parking at, on uh, Hunt. That's absolutely true. I, just, I thought we said you weren't going to. That's, that's fine. You need to explain, but I appreciate it. I mean, with those three access points, the neighborhood is huge. That that's going to use this area. So. And sir. Hey, my name is Jim Satterthwaite. I live at 8 Hunt Street, and actually I walk the new trail about three or four times a week. Um, where that bridge is going to go is it's sort of a wildlife hotspot. The deer actually use the trail and cross right there, and I've seen either a muskrat, a large muskrat or a small beaver, I'm not sure which, swimming and sort of hiding in the bank right at that spot. So I was wondering, I think the impact would be less if you build a bridge with no railing at all. I mean, there are many little bridges throughout Middlesex Fells and the White Mountains that are about that distance that have no railings. and. One could get wet by falling off there, but one couldn't get hurt from falling on a bridge that size. We, we hope to build it so that it could be used by bicycles too. Currently, bicycles aren't allowed on conservation land, but if that were allowed in the future, okay. we're required by the ADA standard to have a two-inch high railing. Um, for bicycles? Or and, for, for, and if you're like <clears throat> something like over 18 inches off the ground, then you have to have a railing for pedestrians as well. Um, Okay. So how high the ground is going to be? It's not going to be very high. About, uh, we think, uh, 16 inches from the bottom of the of the bridge to the water, and then you've got 11 inch glue lamb, and then a. a I'm talking about the bridge over the Abajona. Yeah. No, I'm talking about the regular, like the bog bridge. Um, that'll be no. There'll be no. The yeah. railings will be There's on no the bridge over the Abajona, right? and no other railings yeah, are planned. No, I, I, I think that's what you meant, right? No, I was talking about the bridge over the upper joint, but we're putting the railings yeah, there will really, rail change, that. It'll really change the character of the spot. I mean, it won't be natural anymore. It'll be like this big human made structure right in the heart of the sanctuary where the deer themselves are walking back and forth. I mean, I can see a deer trampling across a, a, a bridge with no railing, but you put the railings there and it's kind of a different sort of atmosphere. Um, so if, if there's not an absolute I don't limit. disagree. I, I, those are the requirements of the grant. If we're going to put a bridge, a bridge there. Pardon? They have bridges and trees now for squirrels. I don't know why. Any other comments from the community? Yes, sir. Your name? Uh, Gary Phillips. I'm a resident on Willow Street. Um, just to add a little lightness to the issue, based on what I said earlier about bicycles, I, if you could somehow build your bridges out of bicycles, <coughs> it would probably outlast any other man-made material. Uh, but anyway, so in, in, in reference to what Mr. Hollis had to say, l let, me, let me say something that may be of general interest to other people who have to interface with your commission. Um, you say that an exception is allowed by the state for you to go ahead and uh, avoid restrictions when working in a wetland. That exception is allowed by the state for conservation committees so that you can go ahead and use PT and other materials that were not allowed, for instance, in the instance of Mr. Hollis building a deck in his backyard. That The reason... Do you want to talk about the nuts and bolts of Mr. Hollis's project? Is that what you're, you're saying? Yes, I'm alluding to Mr. So, Hollis's So project. they changed what makes 
the material uh, pressure treated. So it was arsenic before, and now it's not. Okay, say that again, please. It was arsenic that they injected into the wood. Yeah. I, I don't know, back in, like, I don't know. Do you know, Dave? Uh, it's called the chromate arsenic. But you know when they stopped doing it? So you're saying the Eight or nine years ago. So what, what are we saying? The composition of the material has changed so that it's now acceptable? Yes. In, in and around wetlands? So. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. That explains something that uh, just didn't sound right based on what he had to say. Um, I understand people's appreciation of uh, wetland scenery, nature, and all the rest, but given all that I hear about this proposed trail, I'd say um, the benefits, uh, the disadvantages, and the negatives outweigh the positives. Uh, the concerns that come to my mind are this. Uh, as I spoke to Will out in the, uh, out in the uh, reception area here, he explained that you do have clear title for a right of way between those two abutters. You have clear title for a right of way to access from Hunt Street to the wetlands. Okay, in other words, there's property there that's not wetlands that would have to be access, used for access to the wetlands area. Um, this, this Hunt Street right of way, which is, could, right. goes down to the Millet property. It, it goes right to it. Right. And so there's no private property that has to be crossed. Well, what I'm saying is, if, if you enlarge the map, uh, the one that Will had out, out, outside was really helpful. Uh, the access right of way to the wetlands is not wetlands itself. That's correct. Okay. The concern I would have as an abutter, and we did hear from one of the abutters who objected to that particular uh, wetlands trail, was this, is that they'd see the trail as an invasive and really injuring their, pri their privacy. I would think that the town would be under obligation to construct a barrier, a fence, for both the butters, because after all, you're in their backyard, even though it is a deeded right of way. And I hope that's correct and that that, that is bulletproof, that that's safe to, to operate. It doesn't, it doesn't prove out on that map. It doesn't what? It doesn't prove out on this map. So you're saying someone's in someone's backyard. This property is owned by a gas company. This property is owned by the town. Here's here's the right of way, and our trail's going, or that trail's going, like that. So these people are not impacted because this is a right of way. It's a developed road. Everyone has a right to walk in anything public road. So we're not even talking about this area. That's that's over. And here belongs to the gas company. Right. So the trail starts here, oh, oh, which is oh, no all abutters. I, all I need to say is that if I were a neighbor either here or here, I would really feel a loss of privacy if I had a trail going right next to, practically through my backyard. And I, I would think you'd be under obligation to put some kind of a barrier there for the sake of preserving their, their, their privacy. Because you're actually inviting people, uh, really, to cl a close proximity to their their, pro their property. Uh, another disadvantage is if I lived here in either of these two lots <coughs> on a narrow street, I'd be worried about traffic. I'd be worried about one person parking on that street. Have um, you talked to both those people? But have I talked to them? Yeah. Uh, one yes, one of the one of the two neighbors. I don't know which. My wife could, uh, was concerned. I spoke to one of them, and she was concerned about. The lady at the house was concerned about um, the fact that it was a dead end, and that if anyone parked there other than a resident, it would only enhance the the um, vulnerability to uh, to you know any kind of a danger, be it a fire, an ambulance, uh, an accident, or what have you. Um, but anyways, that's a Can concern. I ask a question? Are you speaking on her behalf, or would it be in her best interest to show up at one of these meetings? Well, I'm talking about the the uh, proposal overall. And, and things that I think Conservation Committee should consider. Um, but you didn't, you, you didn't talk to either one of those abutters? My wife did, yes. And they said they, they wanted a barrier? No, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying I, I would consider that uh, in light of the loss of privacy that both of those abutters would, would experience. Um, 
but you're choosing that for them Sorry. as a recommendation. Right? Oh, yeah, in their interest, yes, yes. Just as you're <coughs> representing the interest, the Trails Committee is representing the interest of people who want to access that. That gives them a benefit, and that can, th this would give them a benefit by preserving their safety and their privacy both. So there are many trails in town that don't have privacy screening next to the entrance. So this would be new. Uh, well, this I'd, would be new and different. Well, and I'd, I'd actually go ahead and do a study on that and compare, given all the characteristics of this proposed trail as compared with others. In other words, there is a parking issue here. Um, and just the configuration of the lots may be different. I, I don't know what I don't know what you're alluding to in terms of a, a comparison or another example. Um, well, it would be the first time that there's a privacy screening put up to you know, shield the neighbors from an entrance to the trail. No one can park down there. I wouldn't expect anyone to park down at the bottom. Well, would 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 there be? Uh, perhaps that's an area that's outside of the uh, the uh, considerations of the trail committee. Maybe the selectmen should review this and actually uh, disallow parking with no parking signs or residents only. Um, I'd consider that as another thing. That would be, yeah, that would be, uh, I don't think that would affect the trail at all if you couldn't park on Hunt Street if you weren't a resident. That's something that could go to the Board of Selectmen yeah. if somebody wanted to bring that to them. Okay, I guess that's about it. I think that's pretty much about it. Thank you. Yes, your name, please. Hi. Um, I'm Virginia Weeks. I live at Ridge Kyle at the corner of the uh, And um, I have a question about the I know the other trail entrances also don't have parking access. Has anyone reported any issues to the Trails Committee? Um, issues of such as for the current trails. no um, we have not uh, it's just a, when you say issues as in people parking there that weren't supposed to or wishing that they wish the existing trails parking in a way that people are complaining about not I haven't got any calls but I did hear from people after we uh, did the maintenance on the trail that they they walk it more. You know? I walk it. I love it. Yeah. Um, so I think we highlighted that there was something there to use. And, and you know, who, I don't know, I suppose there's somebody, but if I had an opportunity to walk on a sidewalk with cars rushing past me, cut through a wooded trail, I, I'm going to pick the trail. And and it's, it's just a nice change up to what, what goes on. This might be a great, you know, area to cut through from Willow to Hunt down into where the depot is and access that part of town. Um, maybe there's a lot of people in these other outer um, neighborhoods that use the train to get into Boston or something. And now every morning they can take that little walk. And, and you know, this is we don't know what's going to happen. So, but, but it's possible there's a lot of use that we're not thinking about here. So. I'll just also comment that in terms of the idea that someone's going to be walking through these neighbors' property, I, I respectfully disagree. Um, I think it's very obvious and clear where their property lines are, and the neighbor on the right actually has those um, conservation Bounds. metal, what do you call them? Bounds. Bounds. Yeah. Bounds that are labeled on top. Mm -hmm. and I'd be very surprised if someone encroached. And plus, you're not supposed to be on these properties or either right next to the conservation parking lot on Pearl Street. And aside from kicking out high school kids that are parking, it's, there's no harm at all. And you're not supposed to be there after dark or before sun. So it's it's really, it's there's no, you know, lack of light concerns. There shouldn't be. Uh, but during the day, it's just few people that are going to be using it during the week and then some people on the weekend it's, right. it's never been an issue or a problem in my house so and the kiosk is proposed well down the trail so anyone standing around watching it or seeing it is not going to be at the edge of hunt street so 
said, uh, we've done a few tra trails before, and uh, look at Pine Cop Pond View and how that's set up. Pond View Lane, it's a very nice access area. When the trail is highlighted, it draws people in. So I don't think anyone will be uh, standing around. But I, I do like the idea about not parking on non-street. I think that'll solve a lot of issues. You know what? We need to move on. This is the only thing on the agenda tonight. And I think we've heard from a lot of people and, and had some really good comments. But um, I'd like to move on. Um, do I hear a motion? Yeah, what are, we, what are we doing? Are we closing this or what are we doing? Well, you can you can just uh, just because we have a lot of things on the agenda, you can you can um, just continue it for more discussion because maybe there is more discussion. I'm not sure. Okay. Or you could ask for a motion. You can just find out what the uh, commission thinks. <clears throat> so, I mean, I, I want to make sure that if, if uh, knowing we spend a lot of time on this, if somebody hasn't had a chance to talk about this or has a comment, that they get it in because I'm of the opinion that I'm ready to close this. Um, I have no problem with what they're doing, so that might find your sense. I don't see another opportunity that we're going to give the public the chance to have their comment if they have one more comment. Okay. Is there any well, we should let the comment? Well, I would only say if this is the only opportunity that everyone in the room should be able to talk. I, I, all right. Free for all. Let's go. Just one last clarification in terms of the process and procedures. Per the line drawing, you know, hand drawings that were done to show the design of the bridge and the swamp, well, is there an opportunity to then see that as a final drawing and design to have better verification? Everything from the tie down approach and what the actual structure will be? Is there. Did you get a copy of the application? Because there are, are drawings in that. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, Kyle? whether those would be more substantiated to understand what's actually being built in the actual materials for final review, or if that's just amongst yourselves the final, but you know, just confirmation that the width is as efficient as can be in the materials. Is that part of the procedure or not? <coughs> One of the things I might add is, is this, this went before town engineering. I don't know what your background is, but I, I trust the town engineers and their professional guidance and their advice as to what they've given is, is uh, their stamp of approval to the Trails Committee for them and what they're building out in the Mallon Conservation Area. So I don't think it needs to be rehashed and rehashed and rehashed over again. I'm sorry, whatever, that's the curious question about the procedures looked at earlier. My last comment was just a question. Uh, is there a curfew in the use of the trails? Is it, in other words, on dusk. It, okay, that's what I thought I heard you say. I just well, yeah, wanted to confirm that. Thank you. Is it the same at Kirchheim and all that? That's the uh, conservation rules. Yeah, it's, it's true on all your conservation rules. So plans. we would, yeah. yeah. And if there's, uh, if somebody's out there after dark, call the police. Yeah. It's, that's the jurisdiction. No. Thank you. I'll call Chuck. No. No. <laughs> Whenever there's a problem in town, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not saying I get a lot of calls. I'm just saying I, I just think that some people do call conservation when someone's doing something wrong. It's really a police matter. It's, I mean, that's really how it goes. But um, we'll do our best to get you to the right spot if you call conservation. Um, so the only thing that I wanted to we should take down the shark take notice signs. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, the only thing I wanted to... Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, my name is Andrew Dribber. I live at 39 Vine Street next to Kyle. I, I fully support the trail. The only thing I think which is also what Kyle's asking is how do we stay informed uh, assuming this moves forward so we can help and kind of know how things are moving along. Well, guys look like a couple of strapping young guys, I'm sure. Just a pinch of tall, but you have yeah. you guys you join them. Looks like, like you signed up for the 40 foot <laughs> long bridge. <laughs> get some boots, get I'm some gloves, sign up. I just want to stay informed. So. Good question, though. Um, so the, the Trails Committee web, uh, web page on the town's website will keep, uh, will post events there so if there's a, a work date we'll put it there um, you can email the trails committee um, 
Facebook. Reading Trails at ci.reading.ma.us. It's on, also on that web page. And we'll put you on our list of when we need volunteers. Um, and then we'll get that kiosk up as soon as we can and post information there. Um, when we start the uh, series of work dates, uh, I will also send a courtesy letter to people um, near the trailheads we'll be working at. And um, you're at the corner of Vine and Hunt. Hunt. Okay, so I'll, I'll You'll reach be out a little wider. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> No way that will put up a two stop. <laughs> Jacobs, the Trails Committee. We also have a Facebook page, okay. Reading Trails Committee, and I always post on there when we're going to have four days and when we're looking for volunteers. So, <laughs> have you. Right. Yeah, sounds good. Great. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there may not be any other. There's one other question uh, oh, at good. the table. So I. I um, so I would like the, the Conservation Commission to entertain mountain bikes in this area and make an exception to our rule for the Millet project. I think they're going to go out there anyways. And as long as they don't dump them. But, but just to make sure that you're fully aware of what's going to happen, I, I, just, I, I think that you can't have open space unless you get people to use it. And part of that access is now allowing them to do what they're doing the most of and mountain bike is a lot we see we see that in Kirchian woods and it's not allowed there it's allowed on the town forest it's allowed in the town yep. forest yeah yep. other places it's not allowed so for this one i would just want you to entertain this so i'm just going to throw that out there it's in the record now and you should close but not issue tonight i don't have a problem with um if you if parks. you're I don't so know about the other members of the commission. No. I just, um, it's such a, I mean, the trail, the trail isn't going to be covered with, like, uh, some sort of, you know, like, uh, over at Matera Cabin, the, the path was lined with dust, right? That kind of fortified the trail and kept it from, I, I mean, it still kept it an earthen trail, but it, it was a little bit more resistant to erosion, a little bit more stable. I mean, you're not proposing to do any of that there, and having walked out there a lot, there's a lot of soft earth. I mean, I, I, I'm hesitant to approve. Um, I'm hesitant because I don't want to see running and erosion, and so that's just... Yeah, it's I'm, so not, soft I'm, not opposed, I'm not opposed to it. I guess no. I'm, I'm not... Does it need to be part of this? Yep. No, it does. It does. And I, I would just say there's no way to get any work done unless a problem. So we want to fix problems, you know, so we need a problem fix. And if there's rutting out there, then we get to fix it. <coughs> so that's, that's how that's going to work. We, I mean, to be clear, we're giving up this three foot, four foot wide area for, for um, the enjoyment of everyone in Reading. And there's, and you know, the animal's going to walk out there too because obviously they're not stupid and they would rather walk through a trail story, than yeah. kill themselves getting through the brush. So <laughs> it's, it only makes sense. That's where you find them. Yeah. I can so, show you pictures from Maine of, of coyotes, beavers, bears, moose, and deer going over the snowmobile trails that go across the yeah. so, west branch of the Penobscot. So, so it's something to discuss them. at the next meeting. It's just, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. okay. We, okay. Can I can I throw something out to Kim? Um, what would the trails committee think of putting wood chips on the trail? Any place where the trail would be beat down into the mud? Um, I, if that happens in the future. I, we would entertain that. I would ask that that not be required right now because we have an awful lot of work ahead of us. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not its not uncommon for us to go back a year or two years after a major project and say, oops, we should really extend this bog bridge and we should add some, uh, raise the treadway in another area. Yeah, and it's also important to say that anybody that enjoys this trail should, you know, sign up for the trail days because the trails committee, uh, you know, works hard. What is it? 10 miles of trails that we have here? About 10 miles of trails, and it's hard to get to every one of them each year. So what we 
what would work best in these areas if we had stewards of the land that are abutters to that land and then they would take ownership of that and contact the trails committee or the conservation commission when they see something wrong and somehow between the land stewards and the conservation commission the trail committee we could get these things done quicker so that's all I make a motion to close there is no no number for this no no, second. we were just the Millet Conservation Area Trail. There is a second. second. From and you could be, you know, all those in favor? Okay. Thank you, everyone, for participating. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Kim. Thank and the Trials Committee. Thank you, Jack. Okay, next item on. Did we just lose Mike? Okay. Uh, yeah, we're going to wait for Mike to get back. What? Almost. Almost. I thought about it. Uh, there is, uh, so there's the, the garden club. Yeah, I'm going to so you just need to Is this the first time we've had snow someone's done? Chuck? Is that? Is this the first time? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to read this. Okay. Next item on the agenda is a notice of intent 270-0717-107 Main Street, map 8, lots 1, comma. And this hearing is being, um, is now opened and being conducted concurrently under the authority of the Mass Wetlands Protection Act. Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended in the Reading General Bylaws, Section 7.1. Hearings conducted in the following manner. Applicant presents the proposal. Commission receives reports. Commission will address questions and comments to the applicant. Then the public will be given the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant, which should be directed to the chair. You give your name and address before your comments or questions are presented. And, um, oh, at this time, what I would like to introduce the members of the Conservation Commission starting on my right, which I didn't do in the last couple. Well, okay. Dave. David Finnett. Rebecca Longley, Chair. Andy Scanlon, Vice Chair. Michael Flynn. Uh, Chuck Cironi, Conservation Administrator. We all set? Yes. Thank you. I'm Jeffrey Brem with Myers Brem Corporation. With me here tonight is Michael Palmer, the owner of 107 Main Street. Uh, thank you, Chuck, for bringing this up. I know it's late, so I'll go through it, and I'll tell you in advance that I don't expect you to close tonight. So we, if we leave things out, we can always address them later. Oh, wow. This is the old Wayside Bazaar building. That's now a silly restaurant. Uh, I want to just orient you, so this is Main Street here. The building here, there's parking around it. Hopkins. Hopkins. Hopkins Street. Uh, this is the wetland that was delineated by Leah Basbanes. It's all off-site wetland. Uh, the property line is right here. But anyway, it's within 100 feet. All the work that we're proposing is within the 100-foot uh, buffer zone. What uh, Mr. Powell wants to do is uh, business is doing well, and he wants to expand the parking lot. So if you've been to the facility at all, slopes down 
here. This was the back of it. This is his dumpster area. He's got a concrete case dumpster area. And then it's gravel. I know he's been before you uh, for planting some trees that were damaged with the snow plows. This is graveled up. And this is the area that he wants to uh, change and add parking. So uh, we want to keep the refuse area where it is. There are four trees that are indicated on this plan that will be removed and need to be mitigated, we understand. Uh, the proposal is just to build the nine parking spaces, six here, three parallel. Uh, and then as far as some of the other requirements, this is a full-blown notice of intent for redevelopment. So we do need to uh, address some things. So real quickly, in my report to you with the NOI, I do go through the stormwater standards. And we, even those redevelopment, we have to meet it to the maximum extent practical. We meet all those standards. So uh, real quickly, we have, we're not directing any runoff directly to the wetland. We're actually directing it to the stormwater system, which has a storm scepter uh, drainage system. Uh, you can see I also included some old calculations. We have massive decreases in flow uh, that was previously designed by others. Uh, the same thing with the recharge. There was massive uh, uh, capacity for additional recharge. To give you an example of what I'm talking about. Uh, there's 5.5 feet of available head, and the previous design only used 1.7 feet of that head. Uh, we meet the TSS because we're going into the storm center. I'm just going through the standards now. Uh, we don't have higher pollutant loads, so that's not applicable. We don't have discharges within an interim protection or a wellhead area. It is redevelopment. And it's maximum extent practicable, but we are meeting all the standards. Road controls are shown in the plan. We have a long-term O&M plan that's already on in place, and we're not changing it at all. And in that was an illicit discharge statement done. So with that, we meet the stormwater standards, which I know you have to check off on your list of things to do. Uh, what we're proposing is some work. All the work is outside the zone of natural vegetation, the 25-foot zone. We have an erosion control line here. We're proposing one tree here. But well, we've been out to the site today, and I know that staff, as well as planning board staff, has some ideas of making a few revisions to this plan, and uh, as well as the chair. So we're, we're amenable to looking at those revisions, and I guess hearing from you tonight, uh, we plan to come back with a slightly revised plan. My presentation is late, so I try to go as quick as I can. <laughs> I have a question for you. Sure. Um, we did get some... Um, uh, Letters from abutters on Leaning, Elm Drive, um, Amy Stone, Diane Ross, and Ross Beals Jr., um, William Mills, Susan Stevens, Leaning Elm Park Condos, uh, and Pierre Anastasi, Robert Arinella and Joseph Caritano, trustees of the Learning Elm Farm condominiums. Basically, um, not, you know, in, in opposition to the expansion. Um, I guess my first question, and I want to understand this, that one of the concerns is, is runoff. Is the runoff from the new parking area uh, no. going no. towards, uh, okay, and then where, do, sh can you show where that water goes? Uh, it's hard to see in this plan. Can plan. you zoom in, Chuck? Um, yeah, because it's like, it basically comes down here and goes on to Hopkins Street. Okay. I just so wanted away from Yeah, I just wanted to, that as a clarification. So it goes toward Hopkins Street? Um, excuse me. Oh, Before I'm you sorry. start talking, we have to oh, we have to go okay. through the presentation and we get to answer questions, you know, All right. ask questions. Sorry. And then when you want to speak, you introduce yourself. Okay. okay. So, so, so those let are me, the rules. Thank you. Let me what? reiterate. Those are the rules. Thank okay. you. Let me read it. So the drainage system was designed previously in two th around 2000. I'm not changing any of that in this presentation. Right now there's a storm septa here. It goes into a manhole. It goes down to another manhole, and it does go onto Hopkins Street. That has been there before, and it will continue to be there. We are draining into that system, yes, uh, and away from the wetlands and away mm -hmm. from any other issues. And it's going through. It's a treated system. 
Um, is the storm drain in front of the dumpster, or is there, it's more in the center there? Right here. Oh, okay. Okay, now I see it. Yeah, okay. Where is the dumpster going eventually? Is it going to be in the it's same location? in the same location. Um, Dumpster staying in the same location? Yes, it's right here. It's basically at the end of the parking lot. It's taking up the space. I moved it, it was going to take up the space. It's a pretty massive structure made out of concrete. It's a steel cap. Uh, it's well designed. It's not going to move. It would be torn down. So the choices are, are you going to move it closer to the wetland? That didn't make a lot of sense to me. It looked like a pretty good structure, so we left it where it was. And, and Chuck and I uh, went out on Tuesday, and we met with your Jeff, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and we were looking at the parking area up on, yeah, right, right in there. There were three spaces, right in there. Yeah, three parallel spaces. And I'm wondering if if that could be narrowed up. Um, Right, Chuck, we talked about that. Yeah, so, so is that what the planning board also had The asked? planning board's talking about something like that too. Either basically these three spaces may end up turning into one space. Where it is we don't know yet. Planting this tree over here and basically enlarging this area as a space. So we would be down from nine to either seven or eight. But I've talked to Mr. Palmer and he's okay with that. That'll give more buffer to this neighbor. It'll it'll do nothing pro or con to the wetland, uh, but it'll provide a little bit of buffer and a, an allowance to put this. We're proposing a nice red maple tree, which will end up being a pretty big tree in this area, and putting it over here. And your mitigation program is met by this plan, but apparently I found out on Tuesday that there's some mitigation that's owed. Mm -hmm. So I gotta get to Chuck to get, get together with Chuck, find out what was owed, so we have to amend the mitigation plan. So there may be another tree or two being placed in this area. So opening that up by taking out some of this pavement will give the opportunity of creating some more buffer. I, I would like to see it um, in, in line with that, you know, I know the broken record here. The, there's a 35 foot no structure line that I'd like to make sure we get on this plan. Okay. Um, that's a, a, a local um, bylaw line and, and because I think we're paving into that. Yeah, we are a little bit. Yeah. Well, that's and, and then we noticed that, and that's why All part that's of that. what started the conversation about Perfect. let's create a larger buffer between the one neighbor and reduce the amount of parking spots. And it, 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 there's some reorganization that probably is gonna he was going to lose right. one anyways. Right. Yeah. And I think it's a balance of yeah. you know, buffering, protection of the wetland keeping the drainage going the way it is, keeping the di we're going to try to find a good balance. Yeah. So give us an opportunity to do that. Absolutely. Okay. So, um, yeah, I guess, uh, so you're going to, so the, the parking area is going to be pitched in such a way that all the water is directed into that storm sector. Yeah, see where it says drain swale, CB1, yep. that's it, basically pitched into the middle and it will narrow it. And then that storm scepter can handle all that, or is is that the bottom of the bowl right here? So it, no, even it if it can handle it, it was way over designed. I don't know why. It won't flush past it in a storm and it won't go down the street, you know, because everything's it's, it's the at a low point. It's a yeah. low point. I'm gonna ask some really basic questions <laughs> just to make sure. Uh, so, no, that's good, and I just want to make sure that whatever water is coming off there and around this parking area, you have curbing? No, we have no curbing. Basically, it's because it's all draining in. So it's all draining in, no curbing needed. Correct. That might come up in the planning board meeting. Mm -hmm. I remember it did in a, in a place down the street, Perfectos. They had to put in vertical granite curbing, so just be prepared to handle that question. Uh, I think, although everything's coming in, the good make me feel additionally better about anything coming off the sides, but I, I know that it wouldn't need it. Um, when you do the buffer area, I, I would like to see um, some, some plants in there that are native, but do you have a landscaper? I mean, how can we ensure that what we plant there is going to be sustainable? You tell me what to do, I'll get it done. Can, can 
you design the plan or should we bring in somebody to do something because we lost all those trees in front and I my fear is it's it, it can't happen again mm -hmm. so let's put something in there that's going to work and we're going to monitor it for a while and you have to replace what doesn't grow but someone to, to look at that you don't have someone to that's going to design what's out there based on what's worked out there which is what's grown in naturally then you should you should get that person yeah. and just design that that little bit of area so we don't run into these problems and the operation and maintenance plans if it doesn't have it it should include tree replacement because those were taken down and you know it's, it's kind of what happens is and I'm the only conservation person and although many town employees rotate through the town looking at different things we all look at different separate things and only only once in a while will we remember oh well engineering should know about this so I think if, even if some other department knew those were taken down I, I didn't I didn't know until you know until it was you know a big deal you know. I have a question too I mean Budding piece of property of the, the lower portion of the map. That's all parking lot right there, isn't it? That's a commercial park, uh, commercial like, parking use. What I can see on the this Google Maps, then that's yep. that's all tar as well. Okay. Yes. There you go. Yeah, I can go. No, right here. Here's his property. Um, and I'll just turn this on. It just takes a minute. Just and uh, my yep, question. Right Sorry, I'm just gonna move it one more time, and then there you go. <laughs> okay. Yep. And let me uh, pull in now that we've done that. All right. And my question so, from the map. Oh, sorry. There you go. Well, I was gonna say because of that, I'm just wondering what kind of adverse effect you're putting additional parking possibly create. Oh, we're talking about this side where there's a single-family home. No, no, I understand that, but the parking lot. That's on this side of it. I'm just, it's, it's, what, I'm, not concerned, what, what, I'm curious, what, what's the concern about the parking being put there? I don't know. There's no concern. I don't think there is. Well, I'm just asking if there's, a, if, I mean, it doesn't seem like there's no, the runoff problem is the, is the main concern, right? So if that's, if that's, if you contain all the runoff, no elevation change between the two. There's no elevation. Yeah, I mean, there is no. Oh, there is. Yeah. Is the house lower elevation or higher? This one here, the wetland goes this way. Oh, okay. So this this all goes that way. We're now going to drain this way and then into the street system. So. Tom, it's a, it's a loss of natural habitat species. I thought it was all gravel. It's about half. Third of it, yeah. Third of it's gravel, yeah. Um, the trees that are leaning, it's it's not it's not. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought, I thought you said that was all gravel because. No, 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 no it's gravel to about here. Okay. So I had a question. There's an existing stream sort of in light gray on the map right above, right north of Wetland Flag 1. Yep. That's jurisdictional too, right? It's, uh, I don't think it's, I think it's intermittent, but yeah, it's a jurisdictional, yep. So we should probably have a 35 foot setback on that as well from the outfall. Okay. See what you're okay, so we need a radius on that too. I think we did, but I'll verify. I don't see it. Okay. That stream came from record plans, but not part of our survey, just so you know. So that's why it probably happened. It's off property. Um and Chuck, I know I've asked this before, and please forgive me because I, I just can't remember. Um, but the previous, um, so you brought up the previous, um, you know, uh, it, during the previous order of conditions, those, the trees between the dumpster and that 30-inch uh, maple were supposed to be set up and maintained and planted. And, but they were, but instead they were taken out and all this gravel was put in without notifying us or getting our approval or any permit or anything like that. I just want to be clear. 
Yeah, I don't, and I, but I don't think it happened all at once. I think it, uh, and I'm not sure, and I, I could be wrong, but I, I think the trees just died off, and they were removed, and then there was this, but the gravel part probably happened all at once. So it was opened up, and then there was gravel put there. And I, you know, I'm probably not the expert on when all that happened. Maybe uh, Mr. Palmer can spread some, shed some light on it when, so we've been there 11 years, <clears throat> and um, I think the snow storage destroyed that much of the uh, 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 plant life, um, and so it was all just dirt. And it was I have uh, I used to landscape the property myself, but now I had hired a landscaper, and the dirt was coming into the uh, asphalt, the parking area. So I just I put one load of um, crushed stone just to keep the dirt down, the dust down. Gotcha. What's, what's going to be the plan for the uh, snow maintenance now that you're... It was the original O&M to put everything in this corner, in the back corner there, or was it supposed to be removal, or...? This space all around the perimeter, um, minimal but this space all around the perimeter, and it satisfied the need thus far, except for uh, one, one season was really heavy snow, but we hauled it out. And we just continue that practice. I believe that's what was agreed to, uh, if it's called the O&M, Operation Management. I apologize if I missed it. Did we get, I know you said the, the O&M for the existing notices is gonna be just maintained as part. Did we get that as part of the application? Not in this one. The original one you did. Could you? I, I know it's. I'm sure it's on the the record. Do you mind if you if you have that? Could you make I sure we submit it? I have. So we can all. No worries. I didn't do it. You remember? Because I didn't design that. System. Yeah, exactly. But they sent me a copy. Uh, Andrew did, I think, or somebody in engineering sent me a copy. Of it, okay. So I have a copy of it. Sure. Right. Big huge PDF. Right. But the part of it Chuck, is the you, one Have you seen it? Do you already have it, Chuck? Uh, yeah, I reviewed it because it was in the file. Okay. Um, so he but I can turn it into a PDF easy. You just send it out? If you just send it out. I mean, where, however we get it, that just so we can we can have it as well. Um, right. So let me know, Chuck, if you need me to see it. Okay. Thanks. I mean, I, I understand there's changes to be made. I, I mean, I, I think I understand what's being proposed. I don't have any other questions at this time. I don't know if anybody else does. Questions? Comments? Nope. I don't have questions because I don't know what the finals can look like. When the final gets sent to me, I'll, I'm sure I'll have questions for that. Okay. Any comments from the community? Yeah, I have... So Patricia, can you introduce yourself? Uh, Patricia DeBabne, uh, Lena Butter at 113 Hopkins Street. I, I first, I'm a little confused, um, which I'd like to have put on the record in the meeting minutes um, so that I can access them later, to the fact that I came here with concerns about the property and the trees being cut down and all of that way back several months ago prior to any of this coming up. And it, as you know, since you were here, it was stretched out for several months. There was going to be a plan to replace what was cut down, and then it was going to be after the winter, and then it became, you know, Mr. Palmer couldn't attend a couple of meetings, and we are now at the end of May, and it seems like that has just totally come off the table. I've been asked to have faith in the system here, which right now I'm dumbfounded as to why I was told to have any faith. Because it seems to me, I'm gonna just be blunt, is that Mr. Taroni is all for this project, instructing you know, them what they should do to get approval. I just don't think it's right. So I'm going to put that on the record. First of all, I'm going to say that there's already a drainage issue 
of which the town has put in a drain on my property. <coughs> so the fact that this is now being drained along that, the, the parallel of that, it's very concerning. Um, the parking in the back is very concerning. First, from the perspective that the last meeting that we were at, I don't know which one of you said it, but one of you said that you had been out to the property and that the spaces on in the lot were not filled, but there was parking on the street, which is a pretty common occurrence. And um, so I, I'm a little confused as to why additional parking is needed right at this time. And I'm going to say that, again, as I've stated in the past, I feel that Mr. Palmer has, on several occasions through the years, as is evidenced in me coming here or writing um, concerns, has put the horse before the cart. And I don't know if that's his plan right now to get the additional parking for something else that might be planned later. But I'm asking the town to hold someone accountable for what he's already not in compliance with. And to, rather than allow him, you know, he's kind of proven that he doesn't comply to what's already in place. So why you would allow it to just go on and on, I'm a little, um, maybe you can explain that to me. The last time we were here, we were talking about the potential of having uh, an enforcement put into place. And now it's like this is a done deal, and we haven't even finished what we started several months ago. So I don't know how I can oppose it, but I have every intention of opposing it if it's including wetlands that are state protected, I'll take that route too. Because to me, just enough is enough all around. You know, you, you protect certain neighborhoods seemingly, the impact the parking has on their lives, the intrusion it has on their neighborhoods, and then other neighborhoods seemingly don't matter to you. I don't think it's right. I'm just being honest. So uh, I just want to just have it on the record that I help every applicant uh, that comes into the office to present a, uh, an application that doesn't need as many um, meetings as uh, if I never touched it at all or I never made suggestions. The applicant that come in and work with the conservation office prior to uh, submitting their application are here less time, they understand the process better, and they're more prepared to field questions. I do that for everyone. I'm. Um, it was my suggestion to, it, well, it was my observation that they didn't uh, mat, uh, meet our 35-foot setback. They didn't what? Meet the 35-foot setback with the pavement. And with that, I told them that they're going to be bound up in that corner and that I'd, I would like to see more vegetation, a wider buffer zone next to your property because you had talked to me. And I thought that was a good, a good area to invest some time with the applicant to try to make it the best it could be. And the applicant... For who? Well, I think more buffer, more vegetated buffer between the property makes it better for you. Except when the except when but the that's, property that's owner why I does did it. not on or what's already a buffer. But that's why I did it, and, and that's what happened. And takes down whatever during. he chooses without coming before the board to get the proper authorization that he should be aware at this point if he's a caring neighbor and community member to do. And he hasn't done it over and over again. And here you are just disregarding it. So forgive me, but I'm extremely annoyed. No, and I, I understand that. I understand there's a lot of history here. And 
we are talking about what's going on now within the what what brought me here recently not it's not that historical it's pretty recent mm -hmm. we didn't even get into the history of what happened prior to that well, that's all because I it, it's because yeah because you you led me to believe as a committee that it would be discussed again at a future date and it seemingly is not going to be discussed again so well that's it's not done yet well wow. it because sounds pretty they done. still have to come back what and are you looking for discussion uh, 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 what well, I guess I'm confused as, as what you feel is missing as part of the discussion part of what's missing is we never resolved the cutting down of trees and vegetation that occurred prior to this new uh, notice of intent. So that's Excuse not me finished. For interrupting you, but but Mr. Brim actually did address that. He said, I understand there are certain things that I need to come before you and, and mitigate for vegetation that was already cut. He did just say that as part of his, his presentation. But this started in the fall. He said and he, we are now right. almost into June. And we are only discussing it because of a notice of intent that is now on the table. But this, the, the previous cutting of the trees is going to be part of this new notice of intent. Yeah, with, with now parking on all sides of the prop of our property that's on the, three sides that's his right and prerogative to actually present it in that fashion okay and it's my right to oppose it right. and to make my opposition correct right. no and, and both of you understand and i realize this is we're bound by guidelines and regulations and we have some some elasticity in there depending upon compromises made on both sides but i mean very often we hear neighbors complaining about things because they just don't like what's happening. And in fact, the property owner or the person who solicited a notice of intent is doing things that are well within the bounds of the law or the regulations. And so we're not here to pick and choose sides. We're here to try to make the best of what in front of us based on the rules and the guidelines that we follow. So it's not, this is not a personal thing. We're not trying to pit one person against the other. We're trying to make this an accommodating arrangement. With, with, with all fairness to each other's rights. And, and preference is not necessarily a right, it's, it's an opinion. But we have to follow the guidelines. So, so is the, the parking um, going, is it intruding on the wetlands that are there? Well, we haven't decided on what we're gonna allow them for parking yet, so it's, we don't know. Well, is the, is the proposal to intrude on the wetlands that are already there? Can I answer the that? proposal is I, still fluid. I think, I think one, one no, the applicant can answer it. Yeah. The, there are no wetland filling whatsoever. There are no what? No wetlands being filled whatsoever. That's the question you ask. Are we intruding on the wetlands? The answer is unequivocal. No, I didn't no. ask if they were being filled. I that's, mean, what do you I mean asked intruded? if the buffer zone is being impacted. Okay, that's a different question. Well, that's the question I'm asking. We are working within the buffer zone. Okay. Yes. So. I believe after reading, and correct me if I'm wrong, the, the um, wetland protection that you have online, that any person can either oppose it or appeal it. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm just going to let you know that I, we in my household are planning to do that. So for whatever that's worth. Can I address a couple of things? Sure. Just as background, and I didn't go into it with the board because they know it, but just to give you some background, the Wildlife Protection Act, which you talk about, and the regulations, so they have general performance standards. That's what they call them, general performance standards. Mm -hmm. And we have to meet those standards. If you heard me in my presentation, I went through the issues on the stormwater. That's because that's one of the requirements is that I meet I those understand standards. that. So when uh, Mr. Hayes was talking about there are standards that we all have to follow, putting a parking lot in a buffer zone with meeting those standards is something that's allowed. So well, then there are it has to be has approved, and, and if it's approved, it can be appealed. Then if it goes on to you win an appeal, 
then you can do it but my understanding is you can't go forward with any of it until that appeal process is concluded that's a whole different matter yeah okay. but still even the appeal has to be based upon the general performance standards it just can't be mm -hmm. an arbitrary and capricious appeal it has to be based on I understand I, I just didn't want to argue with you I just wanted to give you some background um, and I do want to reiterate what Mr. Panette said I stood up here and I we just found out I just found out some of the background in history and some of it more on Tuesday when I saw the site with the Commission and we know we have to deal with that mitigation problem as part of this notice of intent so when you are indicating or implying that the board is skipped over that absolutely not they're the ones that brought it to my attention in fact Chuck uh, when you also inferred that he's helping us he's helping us help you is what he was doing the things that he's suggesting that we look at are going to provide more of a buffer to your well, property. I have to. So I'm, I'm just giving you some background. I understand, but I have to differ from what you're saying. It's not helping me. It is meeting what is already in place, what should already be in place. So it's not helping me. It's only. It's only. But being in compliance. Bad, bad use what, of words on my behalf. I don't mean by help. I didn't mean by helping you. I didn't. Pro providing more of a buffer to this property, however you want to term that, by keeping the parking further away from the property and planting the mitigation plants at that location instead of other locations on the property. That's what I meant to say. Uh, right, and again, I'm going to just say if already, if what's already in place is not being complied with, then what would make one think that in the future an intended buffer is going to be complied with? That's my question. And it's out there. And I'll tell you that I think the questions have been heard by the board. So I have, a, I have one more question about this particular plan. It just came to mind. Um, sure. Do you have any proposed lighting? No new lighting, right? No new lighting. I don't think it would be necessary. There's a, there's a light uh, right before the uh, dumpster. So I think that would be right here. And there's actually, um, on the back corner of the building, there's a double head light as well, which would give ample yeah. illumination. It would also it's already existing. Yeah, and I don't know if that's already in existed. compliance either. It, it was. It was part of the original planning board approval. Between all, all certain lighting, hours. All the lighting was. Okay. Between um, anyway, the point hours. is we're trying to be least obtrusive, so we're not providing any more, light, any more lighting. I'm sorry, what? Okay, are there any other questions so, uh, from people? Just I need to let other people talk. Excuse me, please. Well, are there any other comments? Yes, sir. I have a few comments. You've answered a lot of them and kind of rested my case a little bit. But if I may go to the board here and ask a couple of questions. When we are leaning out on condominiums, Peter and Stacey, I'm one of the trustees, so I'm representing this crowd plus the ones that emailed to you. Okay. Yep. Um, when I walked through the doctor's office, which, by the way, is a nine to five operation, everybody goes home. Unfortunately, a restaurant operation goes into the late hours of the night. One of our concerns is that the uh, hours change, and, and I know that Mike, when we first came here years ago, said, I'm, I'm going to run a family business and, and try to operate on lesser hours, and he's pretty much done that so far. Uh, but our concern is down the road, should he sell a property or sell a business, and all of a sudden we got people at 2 o'clock in the morning back here banging car doors and intoxicated and talking loud so you can understand that. Chuck, can you answer a question for me? This is our building here, right? Yeah. yeah. This is the closest one beside this one here. You mentioned to me that I'm 150 feet away from here, is that correct? I don't think I measured from that building. Ah. We're, we're a heck of a lot closer than 150 feet. We can probably what, is that, what is that measurement? This is, a, this is a little touchy, so uh, bear with me. Yeah, not a problem. I, I just want to be sure that 
when you told me 150 feet, it didn't sound right. I don't know how they uh, this and the other. Oh, there's Hawkins right there. So, um, so I think I measured there. I didn't see that building. Yeah, so that, this that was is, the this one is I. The, uh, this is the. Uh, that was the one I looked yeah. at. Okay. So this one here. Not much different, is it? Is 148. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. I apologize. Well, oh, you're closer. I should have said, oh, no, I I, I got two feet out of it. <laughs> I, I measured that one. Um, my second question, and you can leave this up, Chuck, if you want. I don't want to make you go back and forth, but. Um, what did I got? Right you're showing your boundary line is the same with Dr. O'Brien's boundary line. Yeah, when I walk down here, you got flags posted down in this area down here. Right. What are those pink flags? Those are the wet flags, sir. Okay, so those are not you're not you're not growing that far back. God no, no. Okay. No. Then explain to me if you could pull up the other picture because yeah. it shows it, the parking it shows, the parking what? It actually shows those what those flags are on that right. land. Too. Okay, it does because I didn't I didn't see that. Um, no. Do you mean the other yeah, uh, he's, he's proposed land? PDF. Uh, yeah. You got a tab so these are the flags right here. So the property line is here. The parking ends prior to the property line. And so the this, flags, is, this is the, the water line? It's the wetland. It's yeah, the this wetland. is the wetland. Yeah. So when I look when I look into this, this is yours, but when yeah. I look into it from here, are you telling me that the pink flags that I see, there's three of them? Well, you, one, you, got you probably don't okay. have that one. Yeah. But, but, so you're not going that far back? Absolutely not. Okay, because it, it, when I looked at the parking lot here, this is three spaces, and you're not proposing to put six spaces in here. He's only three spaces. If you, if you bring up the aerial of that property, there's only three. So how are you getting so far down the road? How are you getting further down here? Well, you got to bring up I mean, here. how are you getting six guys in where he's only showing three, and you're showing a line going straight across? Let me here. zoom in at and you're talking about the perpendicular versus the He's right here. Uh, uh, yeah I'm, I'm, if you look at if you look at the lot picture if well, you couple, showed a couple, couple of minutes meters. ago he's got there's three cars in that in that here, here it is here there's three cars here he's and you're talking about putting six in here I, in hold on i'm going to zoom space. in is that, am i right you put six, six in here three tandem and six perpendicular yeah. and that, that's what you get so what, the property first of all is way down here so there's the reason okay so he stopped well before and then he turned and he's parking him this way so, so you, if he I, if he went i don't know who this property owner is that's his that's his this is all the doctors at yeah. least two parking spaces right here so you have six, yeah. six spaces this all way. in the same direction right and then just one here well there's three on the plan now we're talking about turning okay. that to one and did i hear you saying you were taking what's mitigating plant things from here and putting it over there so we're going to get less plantings on this probably side? not because i have to add more planting okay, okay? We'll, how do we find out about that they we'll be changed the plan and they resubmit and, it and, and then we got to come back in here again and go through this again okay no all right I, are these online at all chuck do you put your plans no, we on? don't uh, planning does so you could look at the we're going to be line. submitting to planning so if you want to check on the line they'll be online okay um and this is all going to be asphalt is that correct yes Okay, and you're draining this way. Correct. So when you plow down here, what happens to the piles of snow? Are you dragging it back out of here, or are you just leaving it sitting right, down here? Right, so I have a machine, so I don't really have a, you know I mean, I can, I can. You're back, you I have a back on the back of the building. Yeah. So you're, you're moving the snow from the back end of this. You're not going to be piling snow. Yeah, and I'm sure that'll be part of the extended OM. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah, All it right. has to be. He, this, it's a good point you make back to this. He's going right to almost to the limit of the property. So if he were to plow any snow, it would be off his property. So he has to move it out of there. So you answered my our lighting questions. Um, and, and this is a question away from this, if I could. Do you have a restaurant license or do you have a club license? Restaurant. You have a restaurant license. Yeah. So now, I don't know the difference in the towns. Every town's different. A renting, renting stipulates that a, okay. a, a, so a restaurant a license call. only allows you to operate till 12. That's what I was going to say. When you, your first point, yeah. um, I know your concern was if someone came in after the fact, but that would really be a licensing a after license the fact. Change. Okay. Right now, my uh, my hours are restricted. <laughs> well, right. Okay. And, and you've 
done what you've said you were yeah, going to do. Yeah, I've always yeah, that's maintained like a 10, 11 o'clock. Yeah. So, and I guess the, the biggest concern that we have, especially for the people earlier that I showed you, they're, they're looking right through this parking lot, right into your parking lot. So, it's it's great. These people all go home at 5 o'clock, so yeah, no, they're not waking anybody up. This, from, is, yeah. this is what our concern is. That, that, and I, you know, whatever you can do to help us, because we can't do anything down here, and we can't do anything across here because we're, we're held to the 100-foot buffer zone or whatever the variance was allowed. We can't do anything here to block off what you're doing. Plus, we're three feet, right. we're, we're three miles higher than you are. Yeah. Yeah. Originally mentioned too was hiring a uh, uh, landscape uh, consultant, so we can bring that into play and see if we can do it, whatever we can do. Yeah. Yeah. You can always plant something in a buffer zone. I don't recall anybody being turned into planting something, <laughs> so long as it wasn't a, a, a so invasive species. Needed. So that was one of my other questions, and you you guys can maybe answer this for me. You've been out to that wetland, and you've seen the wetland and the buffer zone around it. We've had some of our neighbors on Hopkins Street complaining to us because there are all kinds of trees that have, been, <laughs> have fallen in that. In that. Is that, I, I heard you earlier saying overgrow. I'm getting away from the yes, project for a minute, but I heard you say something about overgrowth, and that's what's causing these trees to die. But, I mean, we've got huge trees that have gone over in that yard. I'm, I'm, I'm concerned that this doesn't affect any more down here, and I think you've answered that by talking about how you're grading this property. So let's hope it works and we don't have that issue. But well, is that what's going on back there? Is that is it just are those trees falling because they're just too close to each other? Yeah, could be a number of reasons actually. There's some that are leaning, like along your property, they're leaning this way. We got trees. We got trees leaning. We just did about a week and a half ago a walk in town forest and the whole discussion was about how close they can be how the, the life cycle of the the trees and maples and and yeah. how they, they just I mean, we can't each control other it it's it just part of the natural life right. cycle that some are going to fall something else and is we have to, up in its spot i've always been told that we can't touch that buffer zone is that still correct <laughs> we can't go in there and clear those trees or do anything is that is that correct yep correct I think that's all I got, guys. So, if a tree fell onto the area that's mowed, or could potentially fall on the area that's mowed, sure, bring that up. Those are trees that you could do something yeah. about. Yeah. So, health and yeah, safety. Yeah, most of them have gone over inside of the. Yeah. Inside but of to, the to buffer zone. Go in zone. there and just kind of clean it up, make it look good. Or yeah. No, that's. I mean, that's all part of the natural okay. process. All right. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. <coughs> I'd like to reiterate Peter's comments. Uh, your your name, please? Yes, it's Elon Howe. I'm at 4 Leaning Elm Drive. Um, I think one of the things that um, is, was of most concern to me, somewhat um, better understood tonight, uh, but is the loss of the trees. Because I think that that canopy that we have makes for a really nice environment with between residential homes and commercial businesses and that's something that's important to me um, as as a homeowner and um, I am concerned and I think I heard a little bit more about this <coughs> uh, that sounded better was not only a tree is going to go go but is it going to impact trees that are remaining and that was a concern as well um, the other um, issue and I can, um, I think Fusilis has done, it's a very good restaurant, I patronize them, and um, I um, would say that I think that they've been a good neighbor, on, from my perspective. I think that the issue is, is that, I mean, I hear people in that parking lot at night, um, and if people, I hear cars, and I also hear people talking, and I understand that that's fine, and the restaurant closes at a reasonable hour, so it's not a huge issue. But bringing any more tra traffic with these parking spaces is just going to increase the noise and the, um, the issues with uh, the cars. It doesn't got anything to do with wetlands. I do see cars parked on Hawkins Street. 
It's, uh, it's restricted quite a bit, though. It's not not on the uh, the other side of the road. Uh, that was all part of the original. Right, it's on your plan. your side, and it's not on the. I think it only goes up Hopkins, maybe a couple, maybe three, four houses up, and it stops before the bend, I believe. Is there any way to eliminate that by putting this additional parking on your property, or is there any are there any signs that the, sign so the we, police can put up? Uh, from my, from my position, we turn down business regularly. We have people. We have two private rooms, and we we have decided to turn business away because what happens with the 128 proximity is people will have, want to have an event, 40 people. But what those style events will be is 40 people bringing 40 cars. You know what I mean? It's not like family where four people are in one vehicle. So we turn down because our parking lot is too small for the building. Also, our seating, um, our license for seating is dwarfed at around, I think, 132. The, the square footage of that property would call for like a 220 seat restaurant. We're not looking to increase restaurant seating, um, but it would allow us to do a daytime function. I'm, I'm sure, I mean, if you guys are all local, you, you've driven by at lunch and the place is packed. That's usually a bereavement or a, a business meeting. Um, and again, what happens is what 20, 30, uh, 20 person functions, 20 vehicles, and then uh, just our regular clientele. Um, I think the side street parking is out of the, so the other opportunity we've had up till now is Meineke, um, mm. has always allowed us to kind of park. It's, it's, it's always kind of gone unsaid, but they allow us to park there. Uh, a new tenant is going in there and then, you know, and they could enforce a no parking. We've explored millions of options for valet and uh, a, you know across the street parking, but because 28 is so busy, mm. it just someone's going to get you know you can't. So um, so restricting the already existed restricted street parking, I don't think is going to you know yeah. be an answer. Yeah. Almost that, so that's a professional building. Yeah, that's a mixed like a four unit commercial uh, office yeah. building. They don't want you parking there. No, the, uh, I, that's uh, Dr. O'Brien owns that property. He he runs one of the stores inside. Um, I, I'm friendly with him. I'm, we're not friends, but I'm friendly with him. Sure. Um, I'm sure he would. Uh, but you know, people are lazy, and the the grade change there of about three feet. There's a retaining wall, that, and oh, people sure. don't. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they want to just be on property. You know. Right. Um, I mean, I, bad idea. <laughs> yeah, this, some of my staff, a lot of my staff's been with me a long, long time. Um, the people that work with me um, treat it like it's their own. I think we do a real good job of, like, if my staff comes outside, not talking loudly. And, but of course, we can't control customers. Um, but the best thing we can do is restrict the hours, which we do. Um, we're only 9 o'clock, I believe, on Sunday, 10 o'clock Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And, uh, and 11 on Thursday, Friday, uh, no, 11 on Friday, Saturday, so 10 on, so I mean, um, the style of restaurants, more family, it's not a bar room, we have, we have strict drinking policies, people aren't going in just to drink, um, so I think the best thing we can do is control the business in the way that I think we've been doing. Um, that augmented, that additional parking would, I think in all likelihood, um, and I know this was spoken of in the original OM with the planning board. Um, they wanted to have some say on who parked there, uh, whether it be employees versus public. I would, I would think logically the best people would be employees, because then you wouldn't have. Uh, oh, that's a perfect solution. And I, it's funny you brought that up because I was going to make that suggestion. You could control or at least suggest your employees look. It's getting late. Be quiet when you leave. Absolutely. And everybody wants to park near the front door anyway, so the customers are parking around the other side of the building, closer to the front door. So that would be a, a great offering, so to speak, to try to. And the way the restaurant works too is, on a busy night, we may have ten staff, twelve, five or six of them, fifty percent of them, are cut, is the term, let go early when business slows down. So you'll only be, you'll only have four or five cars in that immediate area say from 10 o'clock to 12 sure. on, on the busy on the later nights could I ask a question when you originally 
when your original site plan was approved, something like eight spots on your property, in your lot, like on the side near um, the business, Mr. O'Brien's business, those were designated for parking of employees. You were supposed to put signs up there. I put all the signs up there required me to do. So were there employee, signs there employee now, employee discussed. parking? We were never asked to put employee parking signs. We were, we were asked to put handicap and compact car signs only. But some of those spots were supposed to be for employees. That's how you got you, additional think, spots at the time. The conversation on employee parking drives the seat count. So on the busiest night, they have to figure in how many staff you have. And they and from that... No, I know, but... Patricia, that's, that's a um, planning board question. We're not right. going to... I mean, and... You know, well, some of your questions were just well, planning. Were talking board. about employee parking. Yeah, and we shouldn't have started. Well, yeah, so I so. was only adding to the conversation. No, and I'm not saying it was you. I'm just just cutting it at this point because it's almost 11 o'clock. Because we don't need to talk about what kind of parking. Limit of disturbance is basically mm -hmm. where we're at. You know, stormwater limit of disturbance. Stand back up. And your name, sir? My name is James A. Brescia, B-R-E-S-C-I-A. I live at nine leading Elm Drive, yeah. uh, the condominiums uh, in question. Yeah. I, I have a question for Mr. Palmer as to whether there is a, a schedule for dumpster emptying and removal. So we have an eight yard container there, I believe it's either an eight or a ten. And currently we're on a two day schedule, which is Tuesday and Saturday. Uh, at any particular time? No, I think the town actually has it. So we work with JRM, which the town works with as well. Mm -hmm. So I think they're very conscious, conscience conscious of what, when they're allowed to. I know right now they're picking up around, I believe they're picking up around 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock. In the evening. I know, because that's when I, know, I was there in the morning. Yeah, we, were, we saw them come yeah. uh, that yeah. time. Do you treat your parking lot for ice and snow? We, I, I, uh, I do that myself, and I do uh, hand-thrown sand. Sand? Yes. Uh, uh, salt? Not, uh, if it's icy, I'll throw in the uh, you can buy a mix, and, yeah. I'll, and I'll do the minimal mix. Put, you don't want your, pot, your customers walking through the... Well, the other thing, too, is the salt is bad for the asphalt, so just from a maintenance point of view. Yeah. So I plow that myself. Um, I use the machine, I use my thing, and I do the sand salt myself. So... A couple of comments, if I may. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. can a photograph be displayed? Do you have the airplay? Um, no. Well, I, I don't think so. I just don't know. I have... No? Yeah, unless, unless we have... Uh, It is possible, just so we have them all for the record and everybody can see, because this is not going to be the last meeting. Yeah. <laughs> Send it to Chuck and we can make sure we, we can see it on the board. Everybody can see it the next we just at least pass I'd just like the, the commission to see the scale of the proposed destruction, if you will. And Mr. Palmer, I take it that the proposal contemplates paving the entire area? Yes, sir. 84 feet by 40 feet? Well, there's buffer around the perimeter for plantings. All right. As I said, my name is James Brescia. I reside at 12, uh, 9 Leading Elm Drive. Le uh, Leading Elm Drive condominium is a 12-unit condominium abutting the subject property. It's literally, actually abutting... Uh, Dr. O'Brien's property, um, but shown in the photograph are units one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, uh, six and seven, eight, and nine, actually. In the backyard of each of the units and off the rear decks is 
designated wetlands. It serves as a buffer between the residences on Hopkins Street, which in this photograph shows one, two, three, four, five, uh, and the Leaning Elm Condominium. The designated wetlands provide a buffer, uh, an aesthetically pleasant buffer of heavily vegetated areas, tall trees, many different kinds of trees, many different kinds of plants, as well as the natural habitat for a variety of wildlife, squirrels, chipmunks, uh, rabbits, foxes, raccoons, wild turkeys, even a coyote now and then. What we have right now and enjoy in the warmer months, a canopy of green between Leaning Elm Drive and Hopkins Street. It also, the canopy also provides obstruction of the commercial enterprises on Main Street. The proposal contemplates cutting down this entire area, which I've tried to demonstrate in the photograph. I don't know if Mr. Brim represented one or two trees, but... Uh, four trees. Four, four trees. Um, if I could show you a photograph, Mr. Brim, maybe you could identify the trees that ought to be cut. Do you recognize that photograph? I feel like I'm in court. <laughs> right on the that's a, that's a picture of, of the... Uh, yeah, the it's hard to see in from these, the parking yeah. lot. Um, if that's the dumpster, it would have been taken from about here. Mr. Brush, if, if, Chuck, can you put my plan up? Because we showed the actual tree. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Yeah, that's the arrows that are pointing to this one. This one is up by the three. And this one. So one, two, three, four. Well, these are all eight inches or larger trees. Anything smaller than eight inches, we don't locate. Can still trees? And there will be a few out right there. So all that vegetation in that, in the area, was completely removed, destroyed, and paved over, right? Yes. And nine parking spaces installed. Correct. Well, nine now, but we're going to be revising that, and it'll be reduced a little bit. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it's contemplated that the illumination, which is pointed out at the beginning of the extension, will illuminate the parking spaces in the rear. That's, that's what Mr. Powell wants. Right on the corner of the building in the back? Uh, yeah. yeah, right there. Yeah. There's a, there's a two-head LED floodlight. And that light would go all the way. It, it exists now. Yeah. Um, it's, not, it's not shooting horizontally. It's sh shooting down. Mm -hmm. So you would get a wash of... So, so no plans at all to install additional lighting? It, if it's required, I would do yeah. it. Yeah. But um, additionally... Um, there's a uh, there's uh, two or three um, pole lights mm -hmm. along the property line. Yeah. The, the 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 most recent, the closest one would be right around there. Yeah. No, actually, it's right around here. And so you got this and you got this and. And when you when you plow uh, the lot, where are the piles stored? Um, I just I, I find space all around the perimeter. Oh. And that would be. Rather than the, the front, which would obstruct the view of your business. Yeah, I've never had an issue with the front because the the sidewalk is extra deep, and then I and I have a sizable planting area there as well. I see. And uh, so I've never had an issue with that. I've actually been police have actually come out to question whether I have, but um, coming out of Hopkins on left, you know, uh, you have plenty of visibility. No present plans to. Store the piles of snow. No, like I said, I'm stream end of the property where it's less visible. Right. So, yeah. if you had just a plow, um, sometimes you're forced to push. But I have a machine that picks, and I can place it. The other thing, uh, uh, yeah. The other thing too is now we will gain spaces. So I could actually, in the case of a big storm, I could actually load a couple spaces with snow, mm -hmm. right? Because I'd have a, 
uh, net gain. Just a, a little bit of a comment that I hope to demonstrate to the board the extent of the destruction contemplated by this proposal. A proposal which adversely affects the ecology of the entire neighborhood. Nine, ten houses and the people within them. All this for nine parking spaces and the advancement of a commercial enterprise. to continue uh, 107 Main Street, Map B, Watch 1, Palmer. A second. All those in favor? When's the next meeting to continue? 12th. June. June. June 12th. Do you know when the next planning meeting is? I, I don't. Um, it's in June though, too. Is it also in June? It's in June as well. Yeah. June 5th? Did you say? It, no, it's in June. Oh, I don't okay. remember. I don't have Thank my calendar you. with me. Mm -hmm. Not in the next two weeks. Or next week. May we ask what you just voted on? To I continue, to, uh, we voted to, to continue, continue to the next meeting in June, and that's the 12th. The 12th on a Wednesday. Okay. June 12th, okay. Yeah, there's no about our notification so, after the first meeting, so you have to yeah, monitor the, the agenda. Form. I'd like to say one thing. Bye. At the half of the meeting, can we stop and have a coffee break? Sure. <laughs> you bring the coffee, the donuts. <laughs> 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 if it's worth anything, I'll cater it. Go buy the donut shop. All right, there you go. We're getting coffee at the next meeting. Yeah. Michael. <laughs> Thank you. Can I, can I ask him one thing? Another quick question. So, does the replanting all wait until this is all resolved? Does the replanting of the trees that were cut down? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. 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 Nothing can be done unless they get our approval. Okay. So, this is the they submit a plan, we look at it, we comment, we tell them what we're looking for, what they have to do according to the law. They go back, they prepare something, they come back. And it's actually going to be the last thing we talk probably about it. done we talk about after it. the pavement, after all that. Get that. We want to run over new plants. Okay, old new business, minor plan change, 270 de oh. 0703. Thank you. Lot 3, Veterans Way, map 26, lots 101. Trees? Grass? Grass? Driven? We already did this. We already did grab it. No, Veterans Way is different. Veterans Way is different. Right. Yeah. Please let us Be do Veterans Way. <laughs> because because uh, it's... Uh, oh, my, my, would you look at time? Both Way and Whisper Oh, no! Okay. Guys. <laughs> what you learn tonight? <laughs> so, what's your major maladjustment? <laughs> I live four properties away, and I'm... <laughs> yeah. I was just curious what you realized. So can we just like encapsulate this and say this is outside the 100 foot buffer and to minor plant change and just agree to like just say yeah it looks good? Second. I second. <laughs> All in favor? Oh, I'm sorry, Becky, that's all. Just trying to help. Well, I don't see why we can't say that. I mean, it's pretty clear that it's for a 12 by 20 deck. Uh, for a 10, 12 by 10 deck was originally proposed, and it was for the proposal on the ground uh, uh, propane tank, which is clearly on the plan. Those are the two things that we were going to discuss tonight. I didn't realize the propane tank was also part of this. So now you want to hear about it. Does it matter? No. Well, no, no, not really. Wasn't there, the, wasn't there originally a propane tank on this property? Is it just being moved? No, we were supposed to do national grid, but then with them shutting down, oh. right, so we did propane that was buried, and the only real question is because it's in the 100-foot buffer, but it's still outside the 35. So that's why we just figured we'd throw it on here. We're coming back anyways. I can kind of briefly explain everything if you guys want. I know you're familiar with the projects and everything. Um, 
Yeah, so yeah, so I guess really the major things here. I know the deck's slightly changing, but we're well under the impervious requirement uh, for the property by over 1,500 um, square feet. There's a fence proposed as part of this along the, the limit of work. Everything is staying inside. No trees will be removed as part of that. Um, these are staying. Um, and then there's a proposed 1,000 gallon propane tank underground here. This is just so they, the propane can come into the driveway and fill up, fill up this way. And to give some space back here if he ever did want to develop or put something else you know, in the backyard, either outside or inside. Along with that, it's just a small addition of a four by six portico um, entryway to the home. Again, uh, well under the, the previous requirement. So the, so the apple, I got a minor plan change that lists two things and you just rattle off four, right? Yes, and I apologize for that. that these were kind of late additions. So go over the two that are not listed. Okay, so the two that are not listed is the fence along the limit of work here that cuts up right here uh, along the stormwater management area, um, extends along this property boundary and limit of work and wraps around the front here just to give them some privacy um, gain here. What type of fence? This is the buyer. Hi, this is Nelson. Hi. Hi, can I introduce myself? I'm, yep. I'm Nelson Lau. I'm uh, looking forward to purchasing this property with my wife and young daughter. We're moving from Watertown to looking forward to joining the town of Reading. And we're looking forward to purchasing this home that Jackie is developing. And so we would like a four foot fence to enclose the areas that our dog can go out and run in the property and not get lost in the woods. I think like a white vinyl, but the, yeah, uh, white vinyl, the decorative one. Yes. <laughs> uh, chestnut Hill style yeah. pink vinyl. Yeah. Is one of the things we sometimes do. I'm sorry, yeah, but this is the, not a uh, post and rail fence that's already going to be uh, on the back side of that property. Oh, so you do poke so the critters can kind of crawl under? I think so. Okay. So, well, that's maybe, or maybe is it just around the uh, retention basin? Okay. I remember there was a fence down on that side, just around the retention basin. Yeah, black chain link around Okay. <laughs> sorry, there were like four different conversations yeah, going on. <laughs> so Chuck brought up a good point too, that you can't be restrictive to the outside area so critters can kind of crawl under and pass through like they normally would I know. <laughs> Sounds like the same conversation Thanks. was so happening. Right. Right. A, little, a little bit of space under, on the bottom part. <laughs> yep. How big is your dog? And then also we have a young daughter too, so we'd like her to be able not to play, hit if it was play in the backyard. Yeah. And, uh, no. <laughs> run off into the woods or anything like that. Um, I see there's a proposed gate in that fence in the back. Yeah, that's if we are throwing the frisbee or something and I it goes know. over, we don't have to like, because you know, there's that retention pond area and getting into the back, we want to retrieve a ball or a frisbee that goes just, back there. Just to say what one thing we commonly see that I, I'm telling you is not allowed is to take all your yard waste. Right branches everything and drag it through that gate and just right. plop it out. So you have to throw that over. You're going to have to. No. <laughs> we we recycle and take it to the compost. Side, right. There's curbside. <laughs> we also have a, we have a sticker. A compost pile. Yeah, we have a sticker that you can buy from, from okay. Minimal 25. Or there's curbside pickup twice in the fall, three times in the fall during your your trash day. Okay. And then in two times in the spring. So it's really easy to right. yeah. to get rid of your leaves and your branches. Well, I appreciate you hearing us at this late hour and I'm well, no eager problem. to learn all the necessary regulations. So you still want to move it to town even after listening to all this? <laughs> 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 it's too late now. If you'd like to do it, it's fine. Yeah. 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 My wife works in Ipswich and so we're really looking forward to joining this town. Well, plus you're lucky because that other case we were talking about earlier is at the very other end of town. <laughs> 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 it's good. It's good. How, how does the how do you get access to the propane? What are they the gate there? Uh, you mean like the tank itself? Yeah. I I 
believe they have some kind of they fill it up. something to something to grade where they open and then they they put it in. I've actually not seen an underground store. Yeah. So it's, it's buried underground. There's like a box about this big. It sticks yeah. up. There's a proposed gate to the right of the home, to the right of the garage. A gate would go in there, and then the grade will slope back, so we can go back and fill it. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, it's just, okay. just so you. Make sure you're shoveling back there. Yeah, you make right. that access. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what we. The spoke. further back it is, that's what we're supposed to make sure there's a grade. We will clear a path yeah. when it needs to. Put it that, yeah. you just make sure you fill it in October. But this that is the yeah. to fill it again right. till is the tank very next year. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Right, just so got a little, little chimney with a fill little stuff. teeny chimney yeah. sticking right. out of the yes. top. Looks like a little top of a submarine. Yes. yes. Are you going to use that to heat? There are ways to make connections to the street. Yeah. You might end. Yeah. My my late mother who lived in Pennsylvania had one of these propane tanks to heat her home, so I'm familiar with. Well, I, I have one in my house up in New Hampshire. I, I, I have one too. Summer house, but we keep the heat all winter. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> cheap. Okay, I move we approve the minor plan changes. I second. second. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you. Can I have one more question? Sure. Sure. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry. So we knew it wasn't part of the minor plan change, but um, there's seven trees that he wants to relocate on his property. What do you want us to do? Do you want us to come back as a minor modification? Are they inside the hundred or outside the hundred? They're inside the hundred, um, outside the thirty-five and twenty-five. So but I guess really what he was saying. Sorry. So there are like seven trees in this general area. Can we move them back to here and just relocate them or do bushes in a tree or what do you, yeah. So we'll, before you guys jump in, to remind you where you were at, we already did the tree policy for this permit. So when it was brought to us, so, so, so you got, well, you're going, you're going to start. We're not changing you're gonna the You're going to figure number. out, you're going to figure out how well, you're going to handle this. Right? Well, so also That's part of it. I mean, shouldn't they stay out of the drain easement? Right. They have to stay outside of the drain easement, right? Straight back. Okay. So you, you saw that line, because that drain easement has to be maintained. Okay. Are those trees and right. shrubs in now? Yeah, but some yes. of them are, are like really unhealthy, and the problem is, like, he spent a lot of money for his house. A lot of them are dead, and they just weren't, like, could we just do another site walk, maybe, and you can, you can see there. Well, if they're dead, um, they need to be replaced somehow, right? Because that was yeah, hard. I'm, I'm sure, Jackie, I'm happy to pay the town already or do what not to replace the trees. Replace them, replant them. And do you I just want them relocated so that they are no longer posing a hazard to the house should they fall and land on the house. Since it is going to be a, a new house, new construction and we are putting a sizable amount of our nest egg into this investment. Do you own this do you own this house yet? No. no. So so it's so it's the developer who needs to, so okay. Um, so then yeah we should maybe do a site visit. Yeah I think so. Yeah maybe we'll we should do take a, a look visit. at them. Because so that like that was the reason we didn't do anything about this because from my standpoint I still have an open order condition lots three, right. four and soon to be five. But also on the road is still open too, right. so I don't want to. Whatever we decide, I don't want cutting trees down to kind of hold me up on anything else. So, but certainly a site visit over there. So, what is the, what are the rest of the commission? Well, we'll be going out there anyways on Tuesday, the next meeting. So the right. meeting's on the 12th, the 11th. We have a regular site visit, and they have lot five coming in. So we'll we would be there, but. Sounds like we can do double duty. We can do double duty. I mean, you and I could go out on Monday. Could, yeah. Whatever. I'll go out there. Keep going. Yeah. yeah. But I haven't seen the trees either. But the, you know, yeah. it's no, no, no. It's just this past week we like you Chuck and I found yeah. an additional day. And so just we'll make it happen. We All right. Do a site visit two weeks from now. Yeah, we're there anyways. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if you could just mark the trees somehow. I will, yep. So are we going to approve the three other minor plan changes? I thought we already did. We did. Oh. <coughs> I thought you proposed it. I seconded it. 
No. Did we vote? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. And then there's uh, it's late. It's 113 Arcadia yeah. for a minor plan change. Is that for the other trees that were coming down? What's that one? Uh, they Thank put, you in for a, waiting they put in a propane tank. I don't think I have that. No, no, it's, it's still They put in a propane tank. They buried it in the front yard. And they decided that they didn't want it there. So they decided to put it up against the house in three propane bottles. Yes. I don't think I have it. I don't think I have it. Not buried, just up against the house. Just up against the house. Uh, they're restricted in the back at 113. As you remember, it's a very tough project, and they can't really put it over the line because that's the 25 foot, not the 35 foot. Uh, and um, yeah, so they decided just to say we'll put it up against the house. Yeah, the erosion control is on. The rose control is on the 25 foot line. So they wanted to put it as close to the erosion control between the house and the erosion control, but where they decided to put it, if they were going to bury it, was right in the 25 foot. And they just want to keep moving forward on this house, so they decided to put them up against the house. So it's it's what they have to do. They were doing the finished paint when I went by there today. And the post rail fences. I've had about an email a day the, about the conservation restriction. Be, be behind the, uh, you know, I've already put the post rail fence behind the house. Where is this? Oh, the same, same. Arcadia. Oh, okay. I had the other one and I didn't even think to drive to keep on going and take a look at what it looked like over there. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you, that, that house, now that it's sided and painted, you look at it and it's like, wow, that, that house goes up high. That's what uh, Mr. What's his face said. Yeah, I know. Said. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a nice looking house. A nice job building. So, what's the what is the deal with the conservation restriction? Uh, we just have an. Uh, so we already went through it. Uh, I got your approval. They. I asked a question to the attorney or to. Um, the developer who had to go through the attorney, which was, we approved it, and I, I said we approved it. I sent an email just saying we approved it, and then <laughs> the attorney wrote back after a week and said we just want some language that you approved it. So I guess I'm going to put the same stuff on a letterhead that says conservation and send it to him. But that I felt like we officially approved it. Is this for the town purchase project? Yeah, so the line, so it didn't line up with what we talked about in the order of conditions, and then that was adjusted, and then I showed it to the commission, and they said, this is what we agreed on, approve it. So I did. So we're really at that stage, and then they have to send it to town. This is the propane tanks right here in this area that are going up against the house. This is where they were, kind of up in this area here. Wait, what did you mean by the 25-foot buffer? This erosion control is on the 25-foot buffer. So therefore, it couldn't be put in the ground. Because structure? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's that. So, so are, we, are we making a motion to approve this? Make a motion to approve that. So moved. moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? So moved. I can barely say the word second. <laughs> <laughs> Anything? Hey, I've got a couple more things. Uh, chapter 61. Chapter 61. Chapter 61 land. Whoops. That was wrong. Did I? This is a bad plan. I can't. That's right that. beside the mobile gas station. Yes, it is. Yep. And it's, is it the, the internet property plus the driveway that goes around back to yes. the animal hospital? Yes. yes. Private home? Yep. There's a private home behind the animal hospital. It's yep. really nice. It's a nice little tucked away. Oh, it's great. So I don't know how they got it in there. You try to get that built down there. It's area. completely, it's an island. It's mm. totally surrounded by wetlands. It's, it's highland, believe it or not. It's got dry ground oh, yeah, all the way around it. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> that little road you see there, Becky? Yeah. That's that's a private house at the end of it. Oh. Right. right. So, so that went to school with the kids. So that owner who lives in that private house put a, a restriction on her property, Chapter 61, which allowed her to get favorable uh, tax uh, benefit from the town because she's allowing the town to do a couple of things, get first right of refusal, and then just saying that this is, it's, it's kind of like a forestry plan where she's saying it's a woodlot or something like that. And, and if you want to get out of Chapter 61 land, you have to not only pay back all your back taxes, but you have to give the town first right of refusal where they would pay whatever the appraised value is for the land. So this isn't in a wetland. It's not within 100 feet of a wetland. And it's currently a uh, by, byway for a driveway, some parking that's already on the property, and a trash container. Um, the why, why is it uh, under our purview then? It's under our purview because of open space and um, in Chapter 61, they they want the Conservation Commission gets notified that this has come up. It's just, it's... Yeah, but it's forest land. It's up in forest land. No, that, it could be, back it there. It could be, there is, but not within 100 feet of this property. That's what you yeah. just said. I, was uh, I swear, all right. Okay, let's All right, no, I believe it. No, I'm not going to drive No, no, this you out. could be right. <laughs> I don't want to drag this out too much, but I swear, if this is the property behind the the no, there thing, are there are ones on it. Behind, it's onto the side. You know, as you go into the there's a parking place out front, but you can go in. Oh, don't, I don't take the know dog what's there. up with this thing. It's so sensitive now. Someone must have changed it. The animal. This is they go past. Right Put right it there. There. Okay. Right there. 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 So that's the wetland layer, and I and obviously and this place has a, a disclaimer right. and all that there and and whatnot. But just being eleven o'clock, I'll tell you that. Um, that's more than 100 feet away. Yeah. Uh -huh. show, show him the, where. The wetland. Oh, show him wetland? where. Yeah, I see the wetland. It's the polka dot. And here's oh, the yes. property. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought we were talking about the property with the house on no. it. Okay. No. Okay. No. We're talking so about. What is, what, okay. I don't see understand. The, what is she doing with the property? With the Selling it. Well, she, her driveway goes back, through. Who the hell is she going to sell it to? She's selling it to the veterinary clinic. She's selling it to this veterinary clinic. So we got. The, you guys got it too. Yeah. You got yeah. the plan. You got the proposal. You got the PNS agreement. I saw all that. But yeah. I'm still unclear as to what. I mean, I didn't get into the nuts and bolts of who they're gonna. So the vet there wants to buy it. Wants to buy it. What's she gonna do with it? She's parking. Well, she's gonna need it for parking. Kennels. Yeah. You know, I bet and there'll be a kennel uh, in bit. perpetuity the right of way for the driveway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah she's gonna. She, she doesn't know what she's going to do. Anything is possible, but she promised me it would be less than one dog high and two dogs wide. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. That was the... For anyone who doesn't know that, it was a joke. Yeah, that was the buyer yes, of the property. Yes, we know. That was the buyer of the property that promised you that? <laughs> I saw she paid, she paid $400,000 for the lot. Well, she paid well, she's going to pay four hundred thousand dollars. So the town would have to the match PNS that. four hundred thousand bucks on that piece of property. Is the so right? So we so so Becky's right in a way, but she's not right to say we don't have. We, this shouldn't be part of this meeting. It should be part of this meeting, and we just have to decide if there's any value, you know, no. that well, any wetland meadow that we're enhancing. And I would say that if it was next to Bear Meadow, if it was next to the town forest, it, that's what we would look at here. So. so just to boil this down to why is it we have the town has first right of refusal to buy Correct. this property so and, and then it would essentially us, be about? under our purview potentially if they bought it they would essentially be it would could be conservation restriction on it and we would have mm -hmm. and and my answer but not be, any no, higher we do not we do not have it does Interest. not have 
interest worth four hundred thousand dollars. No, no, it's not connected to any trails, and it's not connected to the wetlands. And yeah. oh, let's like let's, let's let's lumber no, it. And, and I think that's really sell the yeah. sell the lumber and make I'm money. I'm like the exit ramp between ninety five and <laughs> ninety three. It's a I'm useful. It's a, going up there to it's a useful guys. discussion <laughs> to let people know that this property. Everyone out there's other people, the assessor, other, you know, sure. whoever wants to talk about it, they might want to say something. But the commission feels like there's no, no environmental value that we can find on this property, and we're okay with whatever the, the select board wants to do with it. Put down less than no value. So is this so is this the serious. meeting that we were supposed it's to that go to? That property no. right off the highway. That's a different yeah. that was that's that's similar to that property. <laughs> Value. Does everyone agree? We're, we're agree. okay with. Yeah. Yeah. Do we need to vote? Couldn't agree Sorry. more. Okay. Okay. Glad. Right. Okay. What any about other, wait, any other yes. business? Yes. There, I can't find my agenda. There was something on this. Oh. Oh, no, that phone. DPW. Yeah. What? Oh, DPW list. Oh. I'm trying to open it. What DPW? We don't want to go on this driveway now. Where? Oh, to the house? Oh. Well, it's really? a setback there, huh? Drive it and see. I'm just a member of the town. I'm, I'm just I have to do my commission it. duties. I have to do my, I have to do it. I, I don't have the list. So there's only, here's, here's the rundown. There's, oh, absolutely. there's yeah, 10 roads added to our DPW permit. Only two of them are within the wetland. One was already done, and we saw it on the our site walk to um, to the town forest. Oh, yeah. And they're Stroud putting Ave. they put that on there, <coughs> Stroud Ave, because they they just want to clean up what they did, which is they did it before it was on the permit. Um, and so it's that one, and there's one like five around five thirteen uh, Pearl Street, so near you. Not near me at all. Oh, you're up. I'd be seven thirty nine. Seven. So around. So I remember the number was around five, five in the five hundreds. <laughs> but there's a wetland down there. There is. And um, they want to say, well, we're, they're going to just do an overlay. So. Oh no. Under plan change then. It's yeah. it's gonna, the, yeah. They're going to do an overlay. They're doing an overlay. They're just going to go over what's there. So. The process is, I don't have my, it was depending on that, but it didn't open up. Is um, that is that the section um, after, is it? For Franklin? Franklin? Yeah. Same so you're different. on this side of Pearl, there, it's that, yeah, the, the pavement yeah. stinks. Yeah, there's good people. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh. You don't <laughs> it, it keep people off that road. Right. What, Franklin or Pearl? Well, Pearl. I'm talking about Pearl. Pearl after Franklin. You know, we're, we're in the 600s here. So this must yeah. be the area. There's more sixes, and then yeah. so give me a street there. That's right. Oh, wait, wait. you're you're mine. Here's the five hundreds. Yeah, here's another spot. So maybe they're not doing. No, maybe they're crossing Franklin. Mm -hmm. well, but uh, in his I've in his email, he said he's going to adhere to the same conditions that we had before, where they're going to put uh, silt sacks in every storm drain. They're going to within two hundred feet, they'll put down erosion control. Mm -hmm. um, if if you want, I'll go Very on. Paving? They're overlaying the existing paving. They're just putting a top dressing on it. Make a motion to approve the change. Right. Sorry, it was Waste presented this way. Yeah. A second. We're wasting money. All those in favor. Yeah, that's anything else. Um. Any bills? Any administrator report? How about the minutes? Yeah. Did you get minutes? I didn't get any minutes. The minutes came in. Sent you the hours. The oh, minutes came in today. I'll send them out. Um, I'll send them out, and they'll be ready for the next meeting. Okay. And they probably be probably be two. I'm not sure. She, she, so what happens is when they get on RCTV when they present that, then then we can get the minutes. Um, make a motion to adjourn. Wait a minute. Let's just make sure that we. <laughs> did you check? See anything else? See anything else on the agenda? What's this board of selectmen thing that we were supposed to? It's I don't know. It's eleven thirty. Well, that's what it is. We we get we never no, heard back from Chuck. <clears throat> there are a couple 
there are dates, and I think it's to talk to the liaison, our liaison, and... We don't have one, do we? Yeah, we, we have, have two, two, Ann Landry yeah. and John Halsey. So we're still waiting on a date. No, we've Does got every dates. Does have two now? <clears throat> we have dates. So and everybody, I, I don't know if everyone ate mail, but I saw a bunch of emails come in. I didn't get a chance to get to that. It's going to be something I'm going to do tomorrow. So you'll hear about what date works for us. Obviously, I'll tell you guys, like, here's the date that most people said yes to. But I have to send it to the select board and or, you know, Caitlin Saunders to what find out if that's acceptable. And then I'll get back to you. What do they want from us to hear what's going on? I only got that email just like you got that email. No one talked to me in advance and said this is going on. I didn't didn't know. I, I thought there was. I, I actually so thought we were going to be talking to about all four. No, no, it's not about that. It's well, just to talk to. It's t to talk to uh, the select board about you know what's going on with the conservation commission. Uh, well, I would like to talk to about. Oh, Article 23. I didn't. I thought that was specifically what? about. It's a, a $750,000 piece of property right, right next to uh, the Burbank Ice Arena. That's, that's the letter I got that said make time to sit yeah. down and talk to these people. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. There's another, another invitation to discuss what's going on with this committee. Yeah, I got one from uh, Jackie, who's, who's the town manager secretary. Jack the lab. Um, Oh, Jackie. Actually, yeah, it's Jack. Jackie, something. But yeah. make a motion to adjourn. A second. All those in favor? I do want to talk about the record.